my volume, and I will turn up y'all's volume, and we will get... Is that going to be a thing now? Oh, I'll do it. I I think it's a better bit than thanks, Dad. (laughs) For For the announcement. Okay, it probably is. All right. Greetings and salutations, travelers. Welcome back to the Interplanar Crossroads, and welcome back to our Around the Hearth chats. We do these uh, once a week, normally, if we can get to it. If we have enough people, it can make it. And we're going to be talking about Barbarians in 2nd Edition Pathfinder today. So hopefully you guys are interested in that. Should be fun. Um, First off, though, as we usually do, our announcements. Less than five minutes, you can time me. Here we go. So as our disclaimer... This is an adult podcast that sometimes features adults that sometimes use adult language, so you have been warned. Um, we have a Patreon going, both on Black Dragon Gaming and the Interplanar Crossroads. We are at the Interplanar Crossroads today. Um, but the Interplanar Crossroads, for its Patreon, we have a $50 a month goal. If we get up to $50 a month, we're going to give away a rulebook of the winner's choice. If we get up to $100 a month, we're going to give away... The Pathfinder Core Rulebook 2nd Edition Playtest special one, which I must say is quite nice. It's It was well made. There were some problems the last time they did a bigger one, like the Starfinder. <clears throat> but it, this one seems to be quite, quite nice. Um, I haven't had any binding issues with mine or anything like that. So, all that said... Uh, next announcement is we are getting close to our 400 subscriber appreciation one shot, and CryptoFox Gaming has agreed to run that. Uh, we've dropped some hints here and there about what it's going to be, but you'll have to stay tuned to find out. Um, what else? I don't have my card in front of me. I need my card in front of me. It's not here. Um, the Pathfinder Second Edition uh, audiobook that project we've been working on has started moving forward we've started releasing things so we're going to continue to record and assuming we can get editing through and done faster and fast as i can record it we should be able to keep ahead um and release something pretty much every day as far as what we've got out but if there's a pause there you guys know it's just because we're working on the next bit of it so If that happens, just give us some time. We'll get the rest out. Uh, We've got recorded all the way up to Paladin, and we've started releasing. So, Um, And I believe that's everything that we absolutely have to talk about. Oh, we did give away a Hero Forge mini last month, or at least a gift certificate for a certain amount on Hero Forge. So this month, which is September, I have yet to decide what we're going to give away. So if that's something that you guys want to get in on, you need to be giant tier or higher on our Patreon. So that's $10 a month or higher. And usually our gifts are over that as far as what they are. So uh, how much the value is for you. So that's that. Uh, anybody else have anything before we start up? All right. Let's do it then. So I will take me off the front. Get everybody. Oops, wrong thing. There it is. Now we see Amari's... Angry face. All right. So, barbarians. First thing we come to is obviously the art. Um, Amari looks spectacularly angry as always. So well, that is how she do. Yeah. Even when she's it's just kind of all in itself. She's got a resting rage face too. I mean, whenever you see her. No, just, I mean, have you seen her in the Origin comics art when she's hanging out with Valorous? She's pretty chill there. Mm, I hadn't seen that picture, so we might have to might have to look for that. But yeah, they hang out and get drunk. That's basically her whole personality. Well, there we go. She's just as awful as he is. <laughs> well, hopefully they get together then, because Mauricio just leads him on. So I mean, just just throwing that out there. But all right. Anyway. Of course, she could get with whoever she wants. She's a pretty tough lady. Um, So, Barbarian. Starting off, it's got some nice flavor text that Kane reads in the audiobook, if you get to listen to that. Um, And its token is 
uh, the token art they use for it, like the bear with the axe behind it, and I guess that's blood coming off. Uh, yeah, underneath the little the bear or the wolf or the I don't know, fucking Wolverine head, whatever that is. Angry badger. It could be any number of things. Really, is probably is a badger. Badgers being one of the animals that get rage as an ability. Well, there you go. Mm. They're all all barbarians have a token of a badger now. We're all badger warriors. Badger warriors, yeah, badger warriors from Redwall. Um, all right, but the as far as the flavor text goes, it's kind of your standard stuff, except when it comes to the totems, because totems are now a uh, a thing for every barbarian. Every barbarian gets to pick a totem. Which, if, you, if you've if you played 1E before, in Pathfinder 1E, the archetypes, the way they worked there, was that you would pick one and they would affect the class things that you got automatically. Like, when you progressed, you didn't choose, like you do in 2nd edition, you actually had them change at the levels that they get to stuff. Um, but the totem did not do that. When you chose a totem barbarian, it changed nothing. So you can stack it with any other archetype. And most of the time, people did. Most of the time, the idea was, you're always a totem barbarian, because there's no reason yeah. not to be. It didn't change anything. It just gave it, quote-unquote, gave you access to the, the totem powers. And the only stipulation was that once you picked a totem, you couldn't pick rage power totem feats from a different totem. Right. But everybody did it anyways because the totems were amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's address the sidebar first. I think we did that first in the other one as well. Uh, key ability strength makes sense for the barbarian. I think we could all agree. Are you sure it's not intelligence? I'm pretty sure it's not intelligence. All I right. there might I'm be. Agree to disagree. <laughs> uh, but. That should be that's my Kane and mine slogan for each other. We agree to disagree, but only because we're picking at each other, not necessarily because we disagree. Um, I should I actually could see if they had wanted to go something like Constitution instead, having a or like the fighter thing where it's it'd be like strength or Constitution. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Actually, I could say Constitution for the fighter if you were, like, specifically playing a tank. Yeah. A big damage sponge. I think it'd get kind of wonky if they started adding three different abilities. Like, if you were a fighter and you get to pick three different ability scores, that might be your... Oh, your yeah, one. no, absolutely. I was just... It was a errant thought. Yeah. No, I agree. Could work for any of the... Well, not any yeah. of the marshals, but, like, this marshal well, and the other one. I think... Okay, so we haven't gotten to our reading of the fighter yet, but mm -hmm. based on the way they do it, they really make the fighter the weapon master in this uh -huh. edition. So, like, I don't think... At, at the very least, Khan isn't as fitting as it is on a barbarian. The person who gets angry and stands in front of people and gets temporary hit points and... Yeah. Rars. Who doesn't, sure point. who doesn't care if he takes a beating. Or, well... May, the iconic is she, so she doesn't care if she takes a beating. She's gonna take, she's gonna take it and keep going. Um, but we'll talk about rage when we get there because we we all have certain feelings about it. I'm sure. Um, well, and this is reflected in the hit points. It's twelve plus your constitution modifier. That's more than anybody else. Oh yeah, you're an expert in perception, so you're one of the what like two classes, three classes that gets that starts with expert in perception. Most everyone else just gets trained. Mm -hmm. Um. Which is interesting. Expert. Does add some flavor to the barbarian. Yeah. Well, I I figure if if your whole modus operandi in combat is don't get hit because we're not wearing armor or <laughs> do get hit but don't care. Uh, I feel like seeing seeing the danger and then becoming the danger is pretty much your 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 order of operations. <laughs> oh, I can see that playing out in like a like a visual thing. Is like. Oh no! Every, you know the, the the group reacts. Oh no! Look out for the danger! And the barbarian just goes, "I am the danger!" and just runs forward. That, that I am the danger. I think there was like a meme that went around for like a week a year ago. 
That's you funny. Fine vintage meme image right there. Oh, there we go. Vintage meme image. It's like a year old. Oh, no. Just <laughs> wait. Pre- just wait. Practically prehistoric. This group starts to break out memes from like the early 2000s. So, I mean, you better watch it. I like, haven't seen a Rage internet. comic yet. So, I... <laughs> All right. Uh, so you were, you were correct. Expert in perception, saving throws are expert, fortitude, trained in reflex, and expert in will. So expert in will makes sense, like mechanically, but it also seems weird. I like it. I think it makes sense because you're, they they reflect this a little also in the mechanics from first edition, where you had things like indomitable rage, where you would get a huge bonus against being. Um, enchanted yeah. or charmed because you were you basically you were so fucking angry you like you no one could talk you down yeah yeah this, but this I was not a, no... this was not a like a fucking step back from that ledge my friend this was not that's not what was going on you play your mandolin he beats you to death with it <laughs> thing though is i picture like someone with a strong will save is having very good control over their emotions and that is not how I picture a barbarian at all. Well, but you do picture barbarian. Well, he's got barbarian. really good control over his emotions. Just one particular emotion. But but conversely to that, it would be just as hard to control someone who had absolutely no control over exactly. their emotions. Exactly. So I I see that as well. It's just I there's probably a more flavorful way to do it than just creating expert and will save. Well, with the way. When we get to rage, when the way the rage works, they have to have a a static expert level in it, or they're going to have problems because they're uh. not always in rage, regardless of how strong they are. So it's not like first edition where you can be in rage for a long time. So, well, technically you can be rage indefinitely, but it's kind of wonky. You take a break. Yeah. We'll we'll get there in a second. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so we got the three skills plus your int mod, which is mm-hmm. looking fairly standardish for the the melee classes. Yeah. Well, one of our viewers, I do need to thank them. One of our viewers in the comments on the alchemist, you can look there, um, and tell him thank you that he um, he pointed out that they did say something about the alchemists in one of their live streams that. They are going from two to three, plus intelligence modifiers. So they gave them one more uh, skill mm. per uh, for their intelligence. So, I mean that helps, but I don't know why I went to my it's still. Gmail for some reason. Yeah, why'd you go to yeah. Gmail? Why'd you go to Gmail, Kate? I don't know. I was meant to go to YouTube, but the, you know the the icons look so similar. Yeah, they're red. Bump, bump. I'm having a stroke. Don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. It's either that or he's drinking. You decide which is more likely. I I'm gonna vote for stroke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trained in all weapon, uh, all simple and martial weapons. Kind of standard for the barbarian. Makes sense. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, King. But didn't they get small? Sh- oh, here's the armor. Trained in light armor and medium armor. Didn't they have access to shields last? Uh, in one last edition, yes. Okay, I thought they did, which makes it. I'm not really. I understand. Almost certainly do. Well, with their purpose, I find it kind of odd that they're not allowing them to have shields with just the way the shields work. It they they would benefit from it from being up front. Yeah, light but, armor, medium armor, and shields except tower shields. Yeah. So. I get why they're doing it. Their iconic doesn't have it. Amari has. She's a two weapon, a two handed fighter for sure. I mean, a two handed barbarian for sure. Um, but. And then their signature skills are acrobatics, athletics, and intimidation. All of those make a bunch of sense for your barbarian. Yeah. So. As with all the skills, we just wish they were there was more proficient, more signatures. That's all. Okay, really quick. Terrell Penha, if I'm saying that correctly, thank you for notifying us about the skill change in the Alchemist. And if you're not, if he's not saying it right, let us know in the comments, and then you can yeah. you can tear him up in the comments. Spell it phonetically. Mm. 
Because <laughs> I'm hooked on phonics. Hey, that worked when I was a kid on me. Yeah, I know. I did it too. Yeah. Man, you two have a bad addiction. Phonics. <laughs> I can stop whenever I want, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, playing a barbarian is what we come to next. It basically does what the what the other ones do. It does what all of them do. It gives you something for kind of a suggestion for combat, a suggestion for social encounters, exploration mode, and downtime mode, which I think is an excellent way to say to talk about what you're doing as a barbarian. Um, I think that the role playing the barbarian, again, the play test isn't necessarily made for new players but you guys are right you guys you guys are i'm i'm willing to concede that some people are going to be new coming to this and i mean if they're playing a character if they're playing in a class named barbarian i'm pretty sure they know what they're going to try and do with it it's not quite like the alchemist necessarily but that is although i mean to some extent there's also the people who come in from like mmos and the such and, like, the discussion of what you do in times that aren't just breaking things is probably <laughs> the most relevant part for them. Right, but that's in the playing the barbarian, not in role-playing the barbarian. Two different yeah, sections w- in the book. I will say this, uh, like, true. the business side of putting out a book, because they will have to release this as, as like, you know, when they come when they come with the full release as the hardcover and in, in whenever they're doing the rewrite, September of next year. Mm. Uh they will have to like when you when you publish books they have to have a number of pages that i believe is like a multiple of 16 hmm. um just because of how they bind them in production so they have to have how everything fits on the page figured out before they go to final production and if they're going to put this like role playing a barbarian section in here they have to know how it fits on the page and like whether they should cut it out or make it longer or make it shorter so that everything, you know, so they have like 434 pages exactly, or you know, wh- whatever number of pages they have to have to fill out um, the necessary number of pages to like, you know, stick the staples in and glue it to a uh, hardcover. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, I, I I get that. I don't. It's not necessarily that they have to do that. It's what content they end up putting in. No, I just mean like that's that's why it's in the playtest. Ah, fair enough. All right, any remarks on that before we get to the main thing that I got problems with? Uh, you, yeah, all, I think all of us have uh, some issues with how this works. All right, nothing for the for the upper part. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so class features, they start off with the main class feature that everybody goes to Barbarians for. Well, most everybody. It's the Rage. So, just so we don't get anything wrong, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to... I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. <laughs> we'll tell you why we don't like it. Um, so, Barbar- uh, the Rage says it's a concentrate. It's It has the tags of um, Barbarian, Concentrate, Emotion, and Mental. Uh, which those are important tags to remember, especially the concentrate and the emotion. So, you begin raging. You gain a number of temporary hit points equal to your level plus your constitution modifier and enter a state of pure rage that lasts for three rounds. While you are raging, you are affected in these ways. Gain a plus two conditional bonus to damage rolls with melee weapons and unarmed strikes. The bonus is halved if your weapon or unarmed strike is agile. This bonus increases by one at level three and every four levels thereafter. Take a minus one penalty to AC. You can't use actions that have the concentrate trait. That, just so you know, Kane, fair warning, that Mm. comes up a lot in the uh, audiobook. Concentrate trait. So... um, (laughs) So, you can't use uh, actions that have the concentrate trait unless you you also have the rage trait. The seek basic action gains the rage trait while you're raging. So you can't, like if an enemy runs away, you're going to be able to find him. Uh, 
After you have stopped raging, you lose any temporary rema any remaining temporary hit points from using the rage action. You can't use rage again for one round, and you are fr fatigued for one round. You can't voluntarily stop raging. If you stop, if you stop raging before its usual duration expires, you are fatigued and can't rage again until after the next end of your next turn. So yeah. So it's actually it's actually a round longer than I thought it was. It's three rounds and then fatigue, and not not two rounds and then fatigue. Well, I was talking about this with Levi before. It that's what it says, but that's not really what's going to happen. What's probably going to happen? You're going to get you're going to have to start your rage, which takes mm -hmm. an action. So you have to spend an action to do it, and it and it's a concentrate. So that can trigger other people's stuff on certain abilities. If you activate a concentrate action, uh, use a concentrate action within that. So it's there are times that that might be problematic. Um, you're going to spend one of those actions. So that round, you're only getting two actions you can use, which might be a move and a hit. So rage, move, hit is what you're looking at in your first round. So only two actions there. Then you have the and uh levi if you want to look up fatigued so we make sure we don't get it wrong that would be great um so that's two actions on the first round you get a full round of stuff to do on the second you have the third round which you know at the end of that round you're going to go down so you need to maybe use a uh, hit a move and a double and another move possibly depending if you're worried about getting hit without your temporary hit points like if they're really wailing on you so you might get two hits in and a move so you're already looking at two less actions than before because you got to move to get out of the way and then I you're mean, that down sound that bad you're down for the fourth round so that's two two three three six so that's ten actions that you have in those four rounds. Compare well, yeah, that, and then everybody else in the party gets to move without bonuses. Gets to move without bonuses. What you mean? Oh, you mean like moving around? Yeah. Well, I mean they like they get to move without the bonus of rage. Yeah. So, but what I mean is you're spending that those two rounds, like the you're spending the first and the third round preparing to either come into your rage or come out of it. Cause, well, actually, you don't get ten rounds. You don't get ten actions. You only get three and then four. You get seven actions, and then you're fatigued the next round. Because you got to move with those two of those actions. Comparing that to someone else's possible use of Three, 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 the 12 actions. So the action economy doesn't necessarily work well with this mechanic either. Especially if it's like a chase situation with what was happening with, um, jo uh, not Jolari, uh, Tabelda and Charlie. If Tabelda had raged right away and not been able to hit, which would have been unlikely because of that creature's level, but. If she hadn't, that would have been one rage down, and she would have been even closer to that fourth rage of fatigue. Interesting. So fatigue doesn't penalize the things I was expecting it to. Okay. Okay, so what does fatigue do? First and foremost, hampered five. Well, not... Yeah, very first thing, you're hampered five, so you move a bit slower. Mm hmm You take a minus one penalty to AC and saving throws. For okay. every action you take, that increases by one. Okay. And then for the round. So if you, hypothetically right, you can rage, run up, hit, two rounds of just full rage hitting. On your turn, pop out of rage, and you could actually spend that round still trying to, like, finish them off before they can swing back against your rage. But if it doesn't work, you've got a minus four to AC and all saving throws. 
yeah, if you if you don't make it. I Which mean, that sounds very, like very, very good just crit. sit there, wait, and take the hits, and only have the minus one. That uh, that again depends on how big the things are that are hitting you. True. And if they I have mean, poison. If we're playing in a Tommy game, it doesn't really matter whether or not I'm fatigued. It's going to hit me because <laughs> it's got a plus eighty-seven. Ah, but is it going to crit you as well? Yes, because it has a plus eighty-seven. Well, it, rolls, it rolls a fucking four, and it gets a thirty-eight to hit me, and my AC is, I don't know, twenty-eight. <laughs> yeah. Why did I uh, don't spoil me on anything that happened in the last one? Okay, so I gotta I gotta wait for that. But okay, no, no, no I'm not like salty about anything. Just like Ling spiders are scary. Oh yeah, Ling spiders are scary. Well, technically it was two two ahead of us, and we didn't do the poison stuff right. But even so, that negative one on those on those saves, if it doesn't have a good reflex save to start with, I don't know. Um, well, and if you use all your actions, that does go up to a minus four. Right. And so. if you're... Whatever the hasted term is... Quickened. Like uh -huh. you, Quickened. You can get that up to minus five. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, you're a barbarian. You got more hit points than everyone. It's it's a high risk, high reward. Just it just is a hit, high him. Risk hit him until reward. he's dead. Um, thematically, I don't like it though because I can I can see where the math might balance out with the way you, with the way you guys are talking. Thematically, I don't like the idea of what was it, Kane? It's like six six six. Uh, so the number of the beast. Right. Yeah, the number of the beast up and then six down. Um. 18 seconds up and 6 seconds down. No, oh, yeah, no, I was I like I I think it's really gimmickly gimmickly. I think it's really I think it's really gimly the dwarf. I think it's really gimmicky from a mechanical standpoint, but from a play standpoint, I could I guess I get it. I don't or no, other way around. I think it's really gimmicky from a gameplay standpoint, but I think mechanically it's just like I don't think it's as bad as it sounds. Yeah, I don't. I think... unless everybody knows to take advantage of the fact that you're fatigued. Well, we kind of touched on that. They would if they if they've ever if they're a, a group of people that have barbarians common in their area, they would know they're not. You got to catch them when they're down. I mean, that's okay, the same well, that's, thing. That's with... like a favorite enemy scenario. Then if. If I if we do a lot of combat with nobles, they're probably not super familiar with barbarians. Yeah, but if you but you're usually not fighting a lot of nobles. You're usually fighting like bar uh, bandits, uh, kobolds who are very clever, um, and you know lots of the creatures that you're usually fighting against have fought others like you before, especially at higher levels. They've fought other like others like you before, mm -hmm. um, so like that past experience thing that your character would have, that enemy should also have. But I don't know. There's you wouldn't have to get hit by a barbarian too many times or see him in battle too many times to realize they huff and puff every few seconds. Catch him then. At least. Yeah. Well, I, I like. I'll so I'll say two things. I agree with you. I don't like this mechanic. <laughs> I'm, I'm defending it because someone has to. Yeah. Uh, but also, I've just just realized, like looking at it from mid high level play, playing Bradley just the last week here, you can do a lot of damage in one round. And if you've got those circumstantial or those conditional bonuses to your damage, and you're using like a a forceful weapon to mitigate a bunch of the penalties from multiple attacks, mm -hmm. whatever you're swinging at might not live long enough to see you tired. Right. In fact, probably won't live long enough to see you tired. And I think that's what they bank on. And I don't think it's necessarily safe to bank on that. Well, no, you're a barbarian. It's not supposed to be safe. <laughs> no, I mean, that's like, system-wise. I mean, system-wise, it's not necessarily safe to bank on that. Because, um, like, if you're in a boss lair... And the the boss layer can damage you without having to do 
attack rolls and stuff like that. Like if you're oh, yeah. fighting a a a even a young red dragon, if you're fighting a young red dragon, he's going to be immune to fire. So why wouldn't he live in a volcano or a very hot place? Well, they know. I don't. You, I don't know if you can find these anywhere anymore. But there was a time when uh, wizards put out a bunch of three point five dragon stuff. It might have been in the magazine where they they gave like really detailed diagrams and descriptions of what every oh. color of dragon's lair was like. And yep, the That's red been... dragon actually lived in a dormant volcano. I got that book. Where is it? Dracon, draconology. Drac. Okay. Is it, is it the Dragonomicon or is it like some yeah some other thing? There you go. I have both the Practical Guide to Dragon Magic and the Practical Guide to Dragons. Oh so, man, one of those books is older than I am. See, so there you go. I don't know if you can see it. Like yeah, that. there it is. So, a green dragon layer was what that was, and yeah. So if you're fighting, first off, if you're fighting them in their lair, you're making a mistake. Okay, that's admitted. <laughs> yeah, but, I, I walked into the devil's house and I said, hey, give me your shit. And the devil killed me. And I was like, what? How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> so that is fair enough to say. But sometimes you cannot get them out of their lair. And like if it's a black dragon, it doesn't matter if they leave their lair, if they're poisoning the water supply just by being there. So. Yeah. I mean, um, if you're in a black dragon's lair, at least it's not flying. Probably. But it will be swimming. Oh, yeah. So I mean, you're just exchanging one horrible Torian feature for another. Yeah. <laughs> um, but back to Rage. Um, I see that the, that the penalty's not as bad at higher levels, but guess... Yeah, my statement to Paizo would be, well, guess what? Lots of penalties aren't, high, aren't big trouble at higher levels. That's kind of the idea of being higher level. But when it counts, when it's important, like when you're well, low level, with the proficiency system, a minus four or a minus five, like remains relevantly troubling. At level ten, yeah, yeah. because yeah. everything else has a plus ten. That's, yeah, if and you've Bradley's got a plus AC six. dropped four or five, like I'd be in trouble. Right, but that's only if you do stuff on your turn. If you just stand there and take it, nothing happens. You only got the minus one, and you're only sacrificing one turn. Yeah, that's bad. It's a bad trade, though. Is it? These, well, these you just days... told me that they may not live by the time you've got them. By the time you've used three actions at higher levels, well, they no, may what be I'm, dead. What I'm, what I'm saying is that's a bad trade to just take the hits on your fatigue round because you can make your swings on your fatigue round and and uh, like rack up those penalties. Uh, cause you're, you're like, you're taking the gamble of, will they be dead by the end of my round or will they not be dead by the end of my round? But if you choose to take no actions on your fatigue round, they're definitely going to be alive. But that's sort of assuming you're only fighting one thing. Well, yeah. what the hell is the rest of the party doing? Trying to keep you alive. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because I'm, I'm a sleepy boy, and <laughs> this guy needs to die, but his four friends over there need... they got a, they got a play date with everyone else. There you go. So, I, I mean, I see how the math would work out, and I see that type of stuff. Um, it's like... It frustrates me when I come to a... Not frustrate, like, but just like, aw. When I come to a system, and it has barbarians in it, and I can't build Conan because the rage feature doesn't work right to build Conan. Uh, does Who is Conan the Arcan? stay angry for three hours at a time? He, well, kind of. He's really... Wow. I mean, when you I mean, really, if you look read at, the look books... At Miri, she's perpetually angry, but I don't think she's mechanically angry. I don't know. There's an argument could be made there. Uh, she's always angry. She's the Hulk. Um... But I think we've we've kind of said our piece as far as as far as I'd go. I'd say why not? If Constitution's already a large number, a large bonus, just give them their con plus three or something like that, and then they can have. Yeah, just I mean I don't I don't see the reason for changing it in this one. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier. 
Yeah, well, I mean, you never you never you're... ran out of rage in first edition, anyways. Well, you if your GM got you in a situation where you had to rage multiple times, like you had to rage to be able to lift the door and hold it up. Nah. Because the strength check was too high otherwise. And I mean, at, to... at low levels, yes, there's definitely more issue of it, but like by 10th level and beyond, you've got like 30 rounds of rage and no one wants to be in combat for 30 rounds. <laughs> right. Which is or holding up a door for thirty rounds. It's well, no, it's not like the door all the time. It's like the door here, and then this combat over here leading. No, to I, the I know what you're saying. Like I just between rests, I it, it you're probably not going to run out. And even if you do, like there you go. There, there lies the whole point of having a depletable resource. Yeah, but. Like rage doesn't seem depletable. The one thing that the dra that the the barbarian had to keep up with is no longer need to be kept up with outside of that particular combat. Rage, I'm all rage, out of serotonin. Rage. Yeah, because rage, rage, rage down. Rage, rage, rage down. I don't know. Yeah, I did, I did kind of want to make a video, kind of in the style of the the little musical numbers that XP to level three always puts on a bunch of his how to play videos. Oh yeah. You yeah. want so you want to play a barbarian. <laughs> it's just like video footage of one of my friends just screaming through the river valley with an axe just, ah! and then face planting into the dirt and getting back up and ah! yeah for like like 12 seconds he does it and he's down in 12 seconds he does it and he's down alright hey he gets 18 seconds of uptime well 1, 2, 3 and then 4 he's down right? okay he gets 16 seconds <laughs> No, you were right six, the first six, time. Six. No, oh, no, yeah. no. He has to. He has to spend seconds. two seconds to rage. Ah, uh, yeah, you're correct. He has to spend two seconds to rage. I'm angry. Ah, Get in I my hate belly. Naps. Ah. <laughs> Who put me to sleep? Why are you so far away? I mean, <laughs> I need an energy bar. Ah. <laughs> All right, so uh, now we can get to totems. <laughs> uh, that only took way too long. Yeah, it only took like almost 20 minutes. But anyway, um, totems. So totems are cool. I like totems. You start getting them at first level, I believe. Yes, start getting them at first level. And it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Um you get to really flavor up your pa your uh, barbarian, and yeah, I think they're cool. We'll get All into right, them. Yeah. In a minute. Well, yeah, we'll get into them after we run through the the list of other stuff. Yeah. So the stuff you get at fifth is deny advantage, ability boosts, and ancestry feats, just like everybody else, like an ability boosts and ancestry feats. The deny. You forgot about you forgot about the skill feats, critical vitality, general feats, and skilling graces. Oh, that's right. I'm looking at the wrong column. So skill feats, like we said, in the and in barbarian feats. Yeah, yeah. The skill feats are are okay. The same as usual. Yeah, same as usual. We wish that they were some more for certain t ones, and some of the ones for others don't necessarily make a lot of sense. Uh, critical brutality happens at third. Which is nice, because it's two level earlier than what you can usually get it at uh, for, for a lot of the other classes. So Critical specialization effect for any melee weapon or unarmed attack you have. Which is, well, you're, you're spe you, you, have, you have proficiency in all simple and martial weapons, so that's pretty much everything in the book. Yeah. Except for, like, the racial weapons and Japanese stuff. <laughs> yeah. Unless Japanese stuff is... Um, in your setting. I, Unless you're a I Japanese say, barbarian, and then you get all the Japanese stuff and long swords, you're like, what is this? It's straight. I should say that it doesn't say that you are... Yeah, it says that you have, not that you are proficient with. What? what do you it mean? says, like, like, what you have on you. That's what it's meaning. Yeah. So you don't well, have yeah. to be proficient with it to get it. You can pick up anything and oh. use it, and you get the crit. By oh, raw. What's the what's the quick specialization of a chair? I know probably a club. 
Uh, but you have it now. The chair doesn't break. You break. That's that's what I've learned about being hit with a chair. So I'm going to say that's the critical specialization. <laughs> you get to hit with hit them with it again. Yes, durability. That's, that's backswing or whatever it is. All right, you but get just, critical brutality. Yeah. But and you only... have your general feats so at third level and every four levels after, like everyone else. Your skill increases at third level and every second level after, like everyone else. Yep. And now deny advantage. Now deny advantage. Well, I mean, critical brutality only happens when you're raging, so that's worth pointing out. does not happen all the time. It only happens when you're raging. So. You can carry stuff around, just make sure that you're angry before you use it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, I think there's actually a feat like that in here, if I remember right. Um, you are not treated as flat-footed when other cre uh, by creatures of your level or lower that are flanking you, though such creatures can still provide a flank to their allies. Also, you are no longer flat-footed against attacks from sen sensed or unseen creatures of your level or lower. So basically, you cannot be caught flat-footed by anybody of your level or lower. Yeah, Which, this is the this is the uncanny dodge of Pathfinder Second Edition. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, it's it's pretty good. It functions well, especially with the way flat with flat footed being a condition now instead of like something that just happens. Yeah, it makes you uh, <coughs> a lot less appealing for rogues. Mm -hmm. At least always nice. level. unless they're higher level than you. <clears throat> Well, then you have other problems. Well, it's funny because they only have to be one level higher than you. Well, yeah, it's not that big a difference. I, I mean, it is, but because normally I think it's like four levels for Uncanny Dodge. Like, they have to be four levels higher than you to sneak attack you. Mm. Or I but, might be thinking of improved Uncanny Dodge. I don't know. Deny Advantage isn't bad. I'm not trying to say that, but you, it's... It's it's what you would expect okay. from what you it's saw a, in the last soft one. Soft nerf. Yeah. Although you're getting a lot of stuff, like everyone's getting a lot of stuff at fifth level. Yeah. You're getting oh, yeah. stuff every level, so your barbarian's going to be able to change and move around. Um, I do like that. So far, they've they've pretty much completely gotten rid of dead levels. Everybody gets something every level. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, you, again, I do have to commend Paizo for their tables in each of the classes. Barbarian table 3-2, table Barbarian Advancement, everything you need to know about your advancements, right there. Don't even have to look to another chapter to say, what of what skills do I get? How many skills do I get at what levels and what? You yeah. know. Right. So, otherwise, at 5th level you get your ability boost, same as the other classes, and your ancestry feats, again, same as the other classes. Well, not the other classes, the other characters. Yeah. Um, and then at 7th, Juggernaut, you become a master at fortitude saves. When you succeed at a fortitude save, treat it as a critical success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Barbarian. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's yep. Go big or go home on the fortitude saves. Yeah. Because yeah. that, that's, that's basically what master gives you whenever you get something in your saves. Every time you become a master, you, are always, you get to treat it as a critical success. Yeah, and I th well, I think um, no, I think a lot of the times masters treat a critical failure as a failure. That is true. You can never, you can never critically fail. That's what it is. Which I I like. That's like the person who's incredibly hardy against poison shouldn't be able to be like my brain and my heart have swapped places. <laughs> it's a very strange magical poison that causes your bad stuff to happen like that. <laughs> That, that's your bad stuff to happen. That's, yep. that's your bad stuff. I have two new appendices and they've all burst. <laughs> oh, that's a, that would hurt. That's sepsis right there. That's sepsis right there. Um, raging resistance. You gain resistance equal to your con modifier, minimum zero, which I'm not sure why you would have a zero con as a barbarian. Because uh, you're maybe you got drained. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, uh, to hey, two damage types. Con, it's not any worse. Yeah. yeah, which is really good, because a lot of the resistances I've seen so far are kind of trash. Hmm. But you get it to two damage types based on your totem, so that's not bad. Uh, yeah. You at least get two instead of one. But it scales up to, like, resist seven. 
Yeah. And by no, the time actually, it's at it resi resist six, you can't, you literally can't make it resist seven. Well, there you go. Which means at 20th level, when you're fighting even CR 15 things, that ain't, that seven ain't gonna matter much. Yeah, the resistances have really not been very impressive thus far. Um, resist six is still better than uh, some of the spells that give you resistance that I've seen. That hurts, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, I think, yeah, because you get this at ninth level, so your con mod is probably at least three, and I'm pretty sure Barkskin only gives you, like, resistance two. Mm. If that. Yeah, it's not super awesome. Which, again, like Levi said, ain't ain't very fun for those that want to specialize in buffing. But My, Well, you're just using different buff spells, I think. That's going to be the, like, the, the meta has just changed. Yeah, well, there's also the situation of conditional bonuses, everything, almost everything being a conditional bonus. I mean, a, whatever it is. Well, that bonus. goes both ways, though. Mm, I don't know. So, uh, Mighty Rage... If you're Rage, throwing stuff at us that has stacking conditional bonuses, I'm going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, those are like those are the only real... you got, like, three or four different types of bonuses, but as a... This is for the bard, but... We'll talk about it when we get to the bard as far as stacking bonuses and stuff and how it's a little bit more difficult for the bard now. Right. If they've Mighty already Rage. got class features. Uh, Mighty Rage. It's a free action, and it lets you. it's basically letting you not have a dead action to rage. So until 11th level, you've got that dead action at the first part of your rage. Improving the action economy. I love it. Mm. Improve Juggernaut. <laughs> <laughs> Kane when just wants crit, to get fail, through this. Fail. Yeah. And you're a master or legendary. There we go. Yeah. 13th level legendary fort. When you crit fail, you just fail. And when you fail against an effect that takes damage, you take half damage. Now, I really thought there was something just having mastery in something gave you nope. that. It, it's. Nope. Just that, just about everything that gives you master also gives you that. That may have been why I thought that. But I thought there was something with the, again, it may they may just build it into the text of the skills as well. But yeah, it's uh, also possible that it's it's like it's written somewhere that where you don't expect it to be. Yeah. Uh, but that's good that you can do that. It's kind of odd that it's way down here at 13th level, but I guess it's cool. Although, I mean, that's legendary and that's earlier than legendary starts kicking in for most things. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very true. Barbarians yeah, do get to get it, bef get legendary before anybody else. You are, you're now at like a hold your breath in the Marianas Trench tier and you're on the 13th level. Well, I don't know. Mm. You'd probably get crushed by the pr water pressures. Nah, but you're legendary, though. <laughs> you can hold your breath. You'll just die of uh, compression damage. Nah, but you're legendary, though. Only your <laughs> fortitude. Make a fort save, resist compression damage. Well, that's the thing. It's environmental damage. You don't have to. You can't yep. resist it. Boom, boom, boom. Uh. Hey, depends I'll on the type rage of and I have damage. resistance to uh, Wait, environmental make... damage. <laughs> well, if you make fortitude saves against it, you still, even if you fail, you're taking half damage because you just got this ability. Yeah. So See, half... you succeed, you crit succeed. There you go. This holding your breath in the Marianas Trench Barbarian. I don't know. I'm playing, playing an underwater rager. Going to play a merfolk. I'm going to fight giant anglerfish. Yeah, you're gonna fight. I'm gonna fight Under Cthulhu in Relaya. Take underwater Marauder to make sure you can properly hit things underwater. There you go. All right, Weapon Fury. Right, the legendary Penfish said to be even mightier than the Swordfish. I Put will em. fly to Chicago to slap you gently, <laughs> gingerly across the face. <laughs> um, yeah, weapon Fury, your proficiency rank for simple weapons, martial weapons, and unarmed attacks increases to expert, which I do think it's cool that they wrap up unarmed attacks in with the barbarian, because that is something that I think barbarians should have a bit of expertise in. Yeah, they, they slap people around. Yeah, as someone who's partial to the puns. brutal pugilist. 
Uh, you just like breaking stuff. Yeah. Hey, who doesn't like breaking stuff? I mean, you're right. I'm, I wish the make hole spells worked better. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But that's what homebrew is for. Da, New da, da, homebrew. Da. The make hole spells are crap. Indomitable will, that's the one that's going to protect your will saves. It's at 15th, which you're going to need it at 15th. Yeah. Um, and it's very much the same thing as improved juggernaut, is it not? It is, and I'm looking at the save stuff. It does not or say juggernaut. when you're raging, so this is something that is all the time, which is... That's nice. Yeah, that is nice. And then finally at 17th level... Tireless rage, you don't become fatigued when you stop raging. It still takes a normal amount of time before you can rage again. So you just stop being angry for six seconds. Yeah, again. And you, you you're lost no longer, the ability to anger. You're, you're no longer narcoleptic. You are you just have ults. <laughs> yeah. It's like, give me a, just give me a little bit, I'll be angry at you again. But like... Give me about six I can't seconds, keep bro. Doing this man. Give me about. <laughs> yeah, you're you're like you become you become the guy from Memento, but you're really pissed off <laughs> all the time. Like six you're seconds. Just, you've, you've got a grocery list tattooed on one forearm, and like just the words "get angry" tattooed on the other. <laughs> it's like "get angry" and then just below it "get wrecked, son," and then just like below that, you're tired now. You're tired. Ooh, I need milk. <laughs> huh. you get home and there's like five gallons of milk because you forgot you went to go and get milk oh <laughs> i went out to slay the savage hordes and came back with groceries that'd be that'd be hilarious if something like that happened in one of our games tabelda just went out to tabelda went out to get groceries has her own like one shot adventure is just waylaying all the baddies in town just to go and get a gallon of milk and then she comes back with a, with her gallon of milk and she comes in she's covered in blood and guts and viscera and closes the door, sets it down and says <sighs> what? what? I went shopping it doesn't, well I mean it doesn't matter now we're on a hill <laughs> somewhere a nice little low hill Oh, level 19, Devastating Strikes. Your strikes are so devastating that you hardly care about wielding the best weapon against each monster. If you succeed in a melee strike against a creature with resistance against the physical damage type of the weapon or unarmed strike you're using, reduce the resistance by twice your constitution modifier minimum zero. Twice. Oof. Which is... Two times! Two times twice, but so not like twice, twice. Not four times, but two times. Yes. And you, All the so more like, reason uh, for strength or constitution for the barbarian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that because you're going to have to take other things to get your constitution up hot as high as you can. It yeah, with all the stuff you do as a as a barbarian based around your constitution, it, it probably should be their their class. Yeah, because um, there there are way less uh, features in here that are keyed off your strength than there are off your con. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, although we haven't gotten into the feeds, feeds. That's yeah. Well, true. we we also haven't gotten into the totems yet, which is what we're just getting to now. Indeed. I so, should point out that that doesn't say that you have to not be using the right type of weapon. So you could also be using the right type of weapon and then reduce the resistance by another twelve. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think. Well, this is. I think this is just referring to you're hitting someone who has resistance against you. Right. So, I mean, like, if they have resistance to blunt, it's going to, and you've got a, a mace, it's going to help you. Well, you'd have a warhammer. But if you yeah. have a flaming blunt warhammer and you're fighting a red dragon, it can make a difference. Eh. Well, it depends how much fire damage you're doing. But yeah, fair point. Well, anyway, can't use fire. But... Yes, totems. So you got animal totem. Uh, you got animal totem, dragon totem. Uh, where's the other one? Fury, Fury totem. totem. Uh, giant totem. Where's Spirit it? totem. And then superstition totem. I think is the last one. Yes. yes. So, animal totem. 
if you like animals and you base your stuff around it, which actually adds a lot of variety. Adds a lot of variety to your uh, barbarian. So, uh, something with each of the totems is they have an anathema. So, wielding weapons or flagrantly disrespecting any animal of your totems and of your totem animal's kind are anathema to your totem. So, just be nice to wolves if you like the wolves and don't use a bunch of weapons. Don't use any weapons. This is the unarmed brawler, basically. No weapon. No I'm surprised weapon. that horses aren't on the list. You can't be a Dothraki. No. I don't guess you can. You could go with no. bull and change it to hooves. Mm, that's true. D10 piercing hooves. No. That's a lot. You gotta, I mean, you gotta you go just D make it bludgeoning. Yeah, just make it bludgeoning. D10 blood. Are There's... you sure? Hooves are pretty sharp. Slashing. Uh, I'd advocate I'm for sorry, bludgeoning. I'm sorry, but hooves aren't very piercing -y. Horses also have surprisingly sharp teeth. They do. They gotta cut that grass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the animals seem robust enough. You've got a fist if you're an ape. If you go with the ape, you got a. You got two types if you go with a bear: jaws and claw. So you can cover piercing and slashing. Yeah. So, and but if you, you you're not you're not dealing with the the usual uh, claw claw bite from first edition. It's just yeah. a war sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have extra actions. You could still like bite claw claw. You could. And they're um, agile, so that would be better. But they're also agile, so the bonus damage from raging would be reduced. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with the cat down there below the bowl. They get two types, same type, same type of thing. Um, but their slashing does a bit better, so they're so, actually superior to the bear, like demonstrably superior to the bear. So there's no which reason. Is weird. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure. No. Eh. So yeah, go ahead, finish your thing. I'm not sure why a person like if you're min maxing, why you would have a bear totem instead of a cl cat totem, because cat totem also lets you stealth around and stuff. As per the cat says. That's my displeasure beast for everybody that hasn't watched in a while. Um, okay, so what my, my, my curiosity here comes from the jaw attacks. Are these actual jaw attacks? Um, how is this working? Mm -hmm. How do the horns work, assuming you're playing a human? You go like I this. I think <gasps> are you barbarians are you have some primal magic. Kind of damage? Well, technically... Uh, I, I, Technically, Levi's right. Barbarians are primal in their magic. Because, like, you so. literally get to breathe fire with a dragon totem. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, Kane, everybody's magic in second edition. I know. I You're when, the one who complains about that, not me. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure that when reading the blogs way back when, it discussed some idea of barbarians being a way to, like, player character do lycanthropy. Yeah. You definitely feel that way with the animal totems. Like, I think you might literally, like, animal up a bit. Especially, mm -hmm. okay, we haven't gotten to them, but some of the feats, like, change what equipment you're wearing and whatnot. Like, there's an animal totem one that, yeah. Any way well, around it, I'm pretty sure you do mystically change to get antlers or, like, a bigger jaw with more teeth. You do, or because it says thing... right here in Besti Bestial Rage... Your rage action gains the morph, primal, and transmutation traits. So it is both a morph and a transmutation effect. Yeah. You literally change to get the horns of a bull. Or the, the, the fangs of a snake. Because the only thing I could think of otherwise would have been like, like one of the IMEs from Goblins. Oh. I... I think it would have been cool if they'd have let you gotten some free equipment. Like, if, you can still home rule it this way if you want to. That it's not, you're not growing, you just got some free equipment from your class choice for this. That you have a headdress that has horns or something. Oh, so. and like, yeah. So for the cat would be like Black Panther style claw gloves. Yeah. Uh, dragon totems. Dragon, well, with the you get raging resistance for piercing and slashing when you choose your uh, animal totem, which is not necessarily bad. 
I'm not sure how much it'll hold up at higher levels. Which is when but... you start getting it at ninth. Yeah. So you get it just before tenth level. And I don't know. You got a lot of hit points. Maybe maybe it's enough. Maybe those little bits that you're missing out on of, of the damage might make a difference. And you do get two damage types. So blunt is the only thing you got to worry about. But there's a lot of stuff that does multiple types of damage in the bestiary. So, Well, I, I think you could also apply it to energy damage. They don't specify weapon damage. They Well, they specify weapon damage for the animal totem. It is piercing or slashing. No, I just mean for the raging resistance, they don't specify weapon damage. Right, it's but anything... raging resistance based on your totem. Yeah. Raging it's resistance. Types. Oh, based on your totem. Okay. Yep. I didn't see that. So, like, if you were playing a lower magic game, this would be a really strong totem. Any of the totems would be strong in a low magic game, except for the superstition. But... <laughs> Yeah, well, superstition's real good in a high magic game. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're not there yet. So Draconic is basically kind of like the uh, animal totems, except you get a breath weapon instead of a a weapon weapon. So you still get... You have Anathema, which is defying a dragon of your chosen type or letting a personal insult against you slide, as is Anathema to your totem. That's actually probably one of the... That can be a, a really harsh totem, in my opinion. Yeah. Because it's anathema. Like, you lose your powers if you let a personal insult against you slide. That can cause a lot of problems. Brooke, no disrespect, my man. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, like, if you're in a... Like, you're in a... Like, with what happened in the guild uh, in the last session... Spoilers. Not really. Um, uh, oh, not with our release schedule. From uh, the uh, Mr. pinky middle finger. finger, yeah, yeah, the pinky, the middle finger, um, the bird, the Boyd, the Boyd. Uh, he he didn't necessarily directly insult. Uh, and, and insults are really niche. He didn't directly insult Tabelda. But there was that, that undercurrent of she knows when to be quiet. She is a woman that knows when to shut up or something like that, basically. Um, well, that got under her skin. She was not like, hmm. And it, he's someone that could very easily upset somebody that had the dragon totem. And they didn't have to be a personal insult. It just has to be perceived as one by the barbarian. So, yeah, uh, it could get it could cause a lot of problems, especially in an intrigue game, because you still have yeah. barbarians in intrigue games. They gotta have your bodyguard, but I don't know. Just don't piss off the bodyguard. I mean, you're kind of asking for it if you're insulting someone's bodyguard. Well, what if you want to ask for it? What if that's the uh, point of insulting the bodyguard? Well, then you're smart you're a smart guy person i guess <laughs> and it works and it works fun fact other than getting the breath weapon they also deal in addition like the rage damage goes up by one if you make your rage damage elemental oh diggity dang son yep which you can do so it's pretty cool and it's now arcane mm. Mm. so like animal was primal and draconic is arcane See. Yeah, well, yeah, there's not a there's not a divine one, is there? No, no, no. Uh, Probably not. Maybe spirit? there's a divine. Spirits? I think spirit. We'll get down there. We'll get yeah, down we'll there. See, we'll see. We'll see in a minute. Uh, uh, but yeah, you get resistance to your bre chosen breath weapon type. Like, for example, if you choose the silver dragon, my personal favorite, uh, you get a cone of cold, and you get resistance cold, which can be nice really? in those. Yeah, yeah. The paladins of the sky. Um, really, really. I could never would have guessed, given my past knowledge of you as a person. Mm. Hey, I had all dragon types in that game. Thank you very much. Okay, you just Brass didn't meet them. Oh, you like the brat? You like Sonora? Mm -hmm. She was she was fun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. 
So Fury Totem comes after that. As as far as everything goes, Draconic is probably one of the stronger ones, in my opinion. Uh, but Fury is pretty good. Uh, Fury, your rage is what's really the big deal. Your anathema is you don't have one. That's kind of the barbarian you choose if you don't want to have a specific thing you can't do. And you don't have an anathema. Instead, you get a feat. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, depending on the it's a first level barbarian feat. So you guys got to decide if it's worth it for you or not. Well, you also lose the totem ability as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can never trade off. Well, you can never take a totem ability after that is what it means. So no totem feats at all. But your raging resistance applies to all physical damage. Mm hmm. All f Low all magic game win. Yeah. So like Fury and Animal are really good in low magics. Um, if you're having a high magic game, this could become a problem because if you're fighting a lot of mages or even people that just use magic... You don't get the re you don't get one of the core class features you were looking for, which is why it's important to discuss what your campaign's going to be like with your DM before you actually play. Yeah, and then don't take it off the rails and blame him when you die. Uh, that never happened. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> um, I have good players. Any character death that occurred was <clears throat> your fault. No. <laughs> okay. No. I, re I retract my comment. <laughs> All right. Giant Totem. It has been said that this is what Amari is, and you can tell why, because she uses a big old weapon. Well, I mean, she doesn't use it because, well, maybe... I, <laughs> can you have the I, I don't know if she's Giant Totem, because there's, like there's a whole piece of her backstory where she's like, we're going to go kill Frost Giants. And then the other, did like they were like, this is a no girls club. And she was like, eat my actual shit. And then she killed a giant and took his sword and she also killed a bunch of other dudes and everyone was like, where's everybody else? And they said, you can eat my actual shit also and then she left. Uh, but she kept the giant sword. That's her entire backstory. This is a good backstory for a barbarian. Yeah, right, is basically just telling people to do, you ever eat notice, actual shit. <laughs> you, never, you ever notice that uh, characters do a lot of stuff in their backstory that their stats can't back up at level one. Yeah, right. Just yeah. Killing, killing she a just Frostine is a first level barbarian at a zero level barbarian because she wasn't That's even. That's one of my biggest problems with backstories in general. Yeah, is people are like, I was a hero, and it's like, but but are, you're barely a hero now. Yeah, yeah. Just watch the first. Well, just watch all of the episodes of A House Divided. We suck. <laughs> I, I and mean, they're I the first one. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Giant Totem. I like the Giant Totem because this is what um, Traxor would be. So he's going to use those big weapons. He's using Titan Mauler, which is one of my favorite abilities just because it looks so darn cool. Your cloud, your cloud, whatever, whatever the hell his name is. I don't know anything about Final Fantasy. You're you're a Final Fantasy protagonist. Yes, you are literally any anime protagonist that uses a large weapon. You are Ichigo. You are who else? You are Zun Could be Zundetsu. Sephiroth, even. Could, Could be an be antagonist. Sephiroth. That is yeah, a, but he I don't swings know. Is that is that katana? Is that double katana size for a large creature, or is it just sized for an idiot? It's size for it's a Nodachi. Well, it's it's size for Calvary is what it is. I mean, you kind of got to bend space and time in order to even be able to draw it from its sheath because your arms won't be long enough. Well, but... The sheath wouldn't be long. He's not tall enough to put it in his sheath. See, or take it I out. I like the idea of like having a rope attached to your wrist and you literally throw the hilt at someone mm. and then pull it back to grab the handle. Mm-hmm. That's not a terrible idea, but like it's not even a normal Nodachi. It's it's got it's two blades. Dodachi. It's no. a it's a it's a giant fork. No, his doesn't have two blades. Doesn't it's it? one of his one of his uh, clones has two blades. That's on his. just as bad. Here's my <laughs> clone with a giant fork. It is a giant fork, but his is only like normal, uh, not ka yeah katana length. Normal katana. I length. mean. Clone Sephiroth is like a fork of Sephiroth, so makes sense, Forked right? Forked off. For yep. 
And, and you know what he can say when he when he uh when he skewers you? Get forked, son. Just say you're well done. All right, this conversation needs okay. to fork off. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, Titan Mauler. Uh, Titan Mauler is my favorite thematically. However, I don't like that you gain the sluggish condition. Would you look that up for us, Levi, so that we can make sure we do not misquote it? But yep, working on it. Cool. So sluggish, if I remember sluggish, right, isn't all that bad. Movements become clumsy and inexact. Sluggish always includes a value. When you are sluggish, you take a conditional penalty to AC, attack rolls, dexterity based checks, and reflex saving throws <gasps> equal to the equal conditions, to the value. conditions value. Damn it, Levi! <laughs> oh, I was reading that along with you. Because uh, oh. conditions are on page 322. I'm I'm reading them out of the uh, out of the handout that Alex has in the Broken Universe game. Oh. Right. oh. Kane's got Sorry, a cheat sheet. They start... Yeah. Conditions um, start at 319, so I know about where it was. So let's so to be clear, that's an extra minus one on your on your fatigue ground. So it's a minus uh, oh. two at first level. On basically well, everything. Well, well not stack, it's, though. Let me... it's a condition. They... It's a condition. It's not a conditional bonus. Or a conditional penalty, I don't believe. Uh... Does it say what type of negative that is? Oh, piss off. <laughs> Okay. Um, so, yeah, it will, like, it should stack, I believe. So the, if the... Because pe- they, they're different uh, conditions. That's true. Yeah, they are different and conditions. it's whenever you're wielding the weapon, it's not when you're raging. Right. Oh, yeah, so they're, they're different qualifiers as well. Yeah, but it's also a conditional penalty for sluggish. I don't know what the penalty for. Don't conditional bonuses, uh, conditional penalty stack. If they're from, well, if conditional penalty stack, then conditional bonuses must also stack. It depends what they're the from. The penalties don't stack, but you can have more than one condition. You take the higher of the two for the penalties, but you might have multiple penalties. So you're basically getting a. Conditions. You're basically sluggish all the time. Yeah. And fatigued is also a conditional penalty. Okay, so they're okay, both. So you take the highest. It, it, would, it would supersede sluggish. Yeah. Um, well, actually, sluggish would supersede fatigued because it takes more stuff down than fatigue does. Well, you would no, just have low. Low. Just the AC. Yeah, fatigued would supersede over like the the things that it pertains to. The so AC and the reflex saves. Because fatigued is minus two. Fatigue starts off minus one, but increases as you make actions. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, as you made actions, it would change. Which is really weird, Paizo. Because then you got to start tracking, well, I've got a minus this and a minus that, and it, that's worse than it was before. So try it. Might want to think about that one. Hmm. Just get rid of sluggish. Just get rid of the sluggish condition. Just, and make just it, get rid of sluggish. Just, just don't give them a the condition. The... Yeah, well, d- they can do it just by just... Not giving a conditional bonus, not giving a condition on it, and just saying they take a minus one whenever they use this weapon. It does kind of remind me of uh, older editions of D anD D, the way the rage works. The difference being that you had a number of rages per day, not like you could do it forever. Mm-hmm. But it was it was the same st- stipulation. You got like three rounds of it, and then you were really tired, and then you were fine. Mm-hmm. But you could do that like three times a day. Right. I still like the I like the Pathfinder way because not only does it make more sense, but biologically you can't re- you can't be angry that long and no. stay. Up. And so I I would I think I would even if if they wanted to do it that way would would seem less kind of weird to me if they were like you can do it three times per day like we're going to it like a, t- a number of is an expendable resource per day limit yeah then it would it would make sense they're like oh i got really angry and now i'm tired because i i've exhausted myself i've overexerted myself right but like i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna eat a sandwich i'm gonna replenish my blood sugar and then i'm gonna do it again yeah i'm gonna <laughs> let my adrenaline stores catch back up 
All right. But the Titan Mauler, I mean, I don't know. I don't like that they always have that penalty. I do think it's hilarious, though, that there's no difference between small and medium creatures, really. So you can be a small creature. You could be a, a halfling Titan Mauler wielding something for a uh, large creature. No. Yes, you can. Read it. If you're not you can small use, or medium. If you are small or medium. Oh. Can you imagine? They, they word this weird, and that's why I, don't I like thought it. you were wrong, but that's dumb. <laughs> that is amazing. That is awesome. I want to make a halfling, maul, halfling titan mauler that found a frying pan that a large creature uses, and smack. That would be hilarious. I think I'm just going to make a halfling lunch. I think I'm going to steal that idea. Maybe it'll show up in a one-shot somewhere. Oh, maybe it'll show up in a one-shot. Oh. Some, some guy who cooks stuff in a frying pan. Maybe bacon. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Hmm? All right. Goblins are close enough to pigs. A goblin land schneck. There you go. All right. But the raging resistance that they get is bludgeoning damage, and your choice of cold, electricity, or fire, so based upon what... You can kind of base it around what type of... um, Oh... Giant you went with. Oh, we didn't talk about their anathema. Failing to accept a personal challenge of your strength is anathema to your totem. Which, which I is think kind of similar to the dragons. It, yeah. it can be. I think it's a lot more open. You can. It's just about failing to accept it. It's not whether you win or lose the challenge. It's just that you did or did not accept it. So you can accept the yeah, challenge. Yeah, but I mean, you could totally take advantage of that. Like, if you knew that this was somebody's totem, you could uh, basically distract them for an eternity by saying, hey, let's arm wrestle. Ah, oh, you beat me? Let's arm wrestle again. Ah, oh, you beat me? Let's arm wrestle again. Well, you can, it doesn't someone... say that you can't, chal can't re-up a challenge. Like, if you win, you can say, fine, now I'm challenging you. And if they refuse, they fail and they have dishonored themselves and they don't apply to your anathema anymore. I challenge you to a battle to the death. Yeah, yep. but I'm saying that's like... what you do. You could totally do that. You could actually totally do that as the totem barbarian, if someone as the as the uh, titan bar titan mauler. If you decided that you know what, I'm tired of people constantly doing that. You're gonna walk up and when someone says, "I challenge," I challenge you. To a battle. What? Wait, wait. No, 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 no. You you said it. You get, Come on. Come on. Let's first, do this. First to die loses. Yep. And or then, you can forfeit right now and we can end this thing. Right. And then you have beaten their personal challenge. That's true. And now Mark. I could see a... I can see a really... Cantankerous DM. Really jerky DM doing what you're saying and saying, okay, you accepted that challenge, but what about this challenge and this Kind of like they do with paladins and and trying to catch them in no-win situations. Eventually, if you beat the challenge, you've beaten that person's challenge is how I would run it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like you can just keep trying and trying over and over again until something happens. It doesn't make sense narratively, much less... Well, what, if you're, uh, what if you are a goblin who tinkers with machines or, or a gnome and you just keep building bigger and better arm wrestling machines to keep challenging them. so it's not <laughs> your challenge are you gonna, are you gonna build challenge. are you are you gonna build a new robot arm to arm wrestle me in the 30 seconds in between your previous challenge no you just start with the lowest one and then challenge him again with a higher level one okay fine then i challenge you to that biggest one and if I win, then clearly I would also win against all the smaller ones, so eat me. Yeah. I mean, and again, you don't have to win. You just have to accept the challenge. Yeah. So if you lose, you say, well, I lost. Although, I do think it would be more fun if it said accept a challenge from a worthy opponent. Yeah, that's, yeah not, that'd be a lot better. Not the baker boy from down the road. Yeah. I'm real strong. How strong are you, boy? It would boy? just feel better to me. Like, it doesn't make sense to me to, like, envision this, like, beefy titan mauler 
like accepting a challenge from like a snotty like five year old. It's like I bet I'm stronger than you. I always beat my daddy. Well, that's not an official challenge, though. Yeah, it's, but they it's could not. Make an it official didn't challenge. say official challenge. It says personal challenge. Yeah, but he didn't challenge him. He didn't say. Yeah. I no, no. He starts with that and then says, "Arm wrestle me." And you're like, something. okay, you put a finger up, and you go, I win. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, like, I, I, it would make sense to me to not have to. Like, you could do that to humiliate them, but you're like, I know I'm better than you. Walk away, child. You can offer them the chance of saying, walk away, walk away, child. And if they don't, they continue the challenge. Then What if you, you what if, what if you fail on purpose? You accept the challenge, but you fail on purpose. It doesn't affect your anathema. Well, there you go. Not by ruling. You so win. You just say, all right, now piss off. Yeah. You just say, you just lose all the time. At, ooh, you lose purposefully all the time at the challenges, just so when you watch, when they're watching you, they're waiting, and you're waiting for that one guy to come up just right. And it's like, I challenge you. You're look at you. You're so weak. And then you say, "Well, uh, you, you you feign getting up real hard." Um, well, I challenge you to 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 a fight. Then to impugn my honor, and so on and so forth. You really play it up. I got the real bad giant bone arthritis. <laughs> and then you know you're wearing these baggy clothes, and you've got the you're old. You're old, so because just it's more fun that way. You're real old. You're the barbarian from Diablo Three. Yeah. You're that barbarian. And you got this big, you know, cloak on that hides all the muscles and stuff, and you're always losing. And you wait till that one comes around, who's your, like, a bounty hunter or something. And you're like, oh, wait, wait, you, I challenge you to a battle. And you're like, oh, come on, old man, don't do this. I challenge you on your honor, sir. And it's like, <laughs> all right, old man, you asked for it. And then when you they come into the ring, you just... Stand up yeah, straight. Yeah, you take off your shirt and you master <laughs> Roshiam. Yeah. And then you're like, whack, you tabelda them. That's what you do. You smack them right face in the in face. face. You put you their push face. his face into his face. <laughs> yep. Okay, that's enough on that's enough on that one. Spirit totem. Spirit totem. Uh, your anathema is disrespecting corpses or spirits that are in your presence. Anathema to your totem. However, defending yourself against undead creatures is not. Yep. That's a well-worded one. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I feel like they kind of have to, because that's... This is like benevolent spirits and not benevolent spirits. Yeah. Be respectful to other people, unless they fuck with you. <laughs> then put their face in their face. Yes. So they get spirit rage, which basically is like ghost touch kind of what it is all yeah, their physical I think attacks i think it's really cool you can do positive or negative energy damage mm -hmm. with your attacks too which is really cool ghost puncher and it uh, and it is divine there you go what are you gonna call that ghost was punchers now levi had the had the better retort there the he followed the pentamic meter and everything <laughs> so you choose... but i wanted to remind you that it is divine like the qualifier for your rage you had asked about that earlier. Yep. We were right. It is divine. <laughs> da -da -da. Uh, you choose which type of it is when you rage. Not when you choose it. When you rage. Which means you can vary it up. You got guys hmm. in front of you that you want to do negative damage to. You know, you don't. there's no like actual ghosts or anything. It's just regular old bandits. Go ahead. Spirit rage. Do negative damage on top of your stuff. That I mean, that would just... That's cool. I think spirit totem barbarians thematically are going to look a lot different than most other barbarians. Yeah. In, in kind of the same way that, like, in 5th edition, grave cleric... Grave domain clerics seem to be thematically a lot different than other clerics. Mm -hmm. Well... You're just gonna present yourself differently. You're not, you know, you're not the 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 warrior savage from the prairies. You're like a the shaman from the mountains or something. Yeah, kind of like or like the the shaman weird... king. Shaman yep. king. You're, it's shaman king. Oh no! You channel uh, them, and that's how you punch the other ghosts. Yeah, yeah. there you go. It's totally you know, it. 
I'm amazed I remember the 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 the, the way yeah. that goes. Um the the yeah, like you you're the you're like the the weird the the guardian from the swamp. Mm. Yeah, you you are the channeler of the ancestors to protect the tribe. You're an orc from WoW. An orc shaman from WoW. I don't want to yeah. be green Jesus though. Uh, yeah, what well, there you go, Kane. Your next character, you can be a spirit totem, a spirit rage uh shaman type guy and call your name thrall and walk through and, and be and always be literally unkillable because yeah. the writers refuse to let you die all right beefs against wow aside this one is is pretty cool and you get the now the raging resistance uh let me see applies to negative damage as well as all damage dealt by the attacks and abilities of undead creatures, regardless Ooh. of damage. That is Ooh. pretty sweet. You want to... Uh, would that apply to... My next brain's being. That would apply to... It says, by the attacks oh. and abilities. So all damage, all damage, ability okay. damage, any type of damage, all damage dealt by attacks and abilities from undead creatures. Okay, well, if that applies to ability damage... No, I, I mean, like, ability score damage. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that that, that would basically that make you immune to ability score damage from undead. You You're gonna pick that up at ninth this? level? You're, yep. like, what, like, resistance four or five? Yeah, so you can't... At ninth level, so you, yeah, you're not... No one's touching you with an enervate. <laughs> yep, and by the time you're 20th, you're just... No, I'm good. I'm done. I'll wade through that. But I I really like the flavor of the spirit totem. I like what you get with the spirit totem. It's really good, especially if you have... It's really good if you have any kind of negative damage or undead creatures in your game. Even banshees can't touch you. With yeah, the, yeah, you're the you're the guy who, in like when you're going through the crypt of the never flame, you strangle Skeletor to death. Like... Yeah. What has become of you? Bone hands on you, and you're like, ha ha! Your bone hands don't affect me, old man. Die. Hey, Skeletor what happens if head you want to hands. heal somebody with your punches? Can you like punch them know. and heal them with positive damage or positive energy? No, I think it specifies in here somewhere that positive it's damage used to attack people is damage, <clears throat> no matter what. Right. Uh, if it has the damage qualifier, it's always damage. So, Darn. okay. So I, I went to uh, the section on damage to look at resistance, and based on the way they're talking about it, uh, damage is a phrase specifically for hit points as and resistance removes damage. Looking in the index, there is nothing listed as ability damage. I'm very surprised that ability damage isn't a thing. However, what I'm going to assume is what's going to happen is that there are going to be types of penalties to certain check, certain yeah, sorts of things. Here, conditions. Uh, drain uh, conditions. That's what it is. They changed yeah. it to a condition. Dagnabbit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, it let me double down, check doesn't it? Yeah. L creatures is well, 84. It, it, it ticks down unless it's, like, drained. Like the drained trait of the drain okay. condition or something. So, uh, drained. When I, oh, that specifically drains you of blood or some other life force. Okay. So, how I think it's going to work. Drained works on fortitude saves and whatnot. <laughs> Sluggish works on dex-based stuff. I think enfeebled? Enfeebled. Uh, ba -ba -ba, yeah, but strength-based stuff. I think rather than having any actual ability damage... There's like a type of condition for each of the results of that type of ability damage. Yeah. So, just to put out there, I'm pretty sure this resistance will not stop undead from screwing over your muscles. Okay. Oh, well. Dex and con. I'm going to look at shadows and see what they do. Real quick. Yeah, go yeah. for it. The lich did yes. not give me the answers I was hoping for, but... Okay. Yeah, because I don't have a beast anyway. It's, now it's we're on superstition you're, you're gonna be the You're going to be the guy throttling the lich to death. Yeah. And so just everyone nice. else. And just That's so you. That's only a paladin job. Yeah. It's actually really cool. And just so we're clear, Kane, Skeletor mm. had meaty hands. 
<laughs> yes, I know, because Skeletor had like a super buff bod, but a weird fucked up face because someone poured acid on his head, and he's actually He Man's uncle. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. Oh, spoilers for a fucking thirty year old cartoon. <laughs> it's older than that. Forty year old cartoon. Pretty close, I think. Anyway, I don't know. I I stu- watched. I watched some of the old Hercules, the mighty Hercules cartoon from the 1960s. Oh. Woo, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, superstition. Start that off. You hate magic. You don't like it. Your anathema is willingly accepting the effects of magic spells, including from scrolls, wands, and the like, even from your allies is anathema to your totem. You can still drink potions, and you can still invest and activate most magic items you find. All right, hypocrite. Uh, through, though items that cast spells are subject to the same restrictions as all other spells. If an ally insists on using magic on you, despite your unwillingness, you have no reason to believe... And you have no reason to believe they will stop. Continuing to travel with that ally counts as willingly accepting their spells. Ooh. As do similar circumstances, and thus is also anathema to your totem. Yeah, th- that's a hard one to to play. It really is. It's a hard bullet to fight. Mm, well, yes and no. You just have to work out a relationship with your casters. Like, don't buff me. Ever. Secretly. Yeah. Lie yeah, to me. Well, don't I mean, let me know. If Lie you, to me. Even if they do know and they find out, like if somebody puts a zone of truth on there, and they're like, well, my no, my friends have never done such a thing. And then they look over. Is that not correct, my friend? Um, my most oh, trusted ally, my brother in arms. Oh. I don't know what you do back there the whole time, but we who have shared cups and of blood, I would lay down my life for you. Yep, <laughs> that whole thing. My trust in you is absolute. That sounds like a, a cashew thing when he turns oh, yeah, to no, like that, that would be somebody. some shit that I did. <laughs> that's, that, that doesn't sound so much like a cashew thing as a cane thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Okay, so it looks like it enfeebled is what the shadow does. So mm. there we go. Yep. Okay. So oh, super they all do conditions. conditions. Is Plus two versus. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. When raging, plus two versus all saves against magic. That's from what I understand of like how bounded, like the numbers, like how they scale. A plus two versus all magical things is gonna make you resist a whole lot of magic. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's I'm like de- being two definitely... levels higher. I think I might scale into it super hard again, like like you can do it in uh, first edition um, with uh, uh, with dwarves. Yeah, I can. Because if you if you wanted to do it that way, you would be a superstitious uh, barbarian dwarf with steel soul, and you had like an additional plus six or more against spells on top of all your normal saves. Fun fact. Okay, mm-hmm. so in the dwarf, Ancient's Blood, the one thing of a bob that lets, makes you better at resisting the stuff, it is actually a circumstance bonus. Ooh! And this is a conditional, so you could put them together. So it does as a reaction. stack. Aha! Right. <laughs> there you right. go. Uh, plus two conditional, plus two circumstance, yes. So. However, you lose two resonance points to do this. You know what? Yeah. I would be willing to eat that for the plus four against spells. Yeah. yeah. Uh, reaction to get another plus two. Oh, holy shit, Donald's here. I didn't. I didn't yeah. couldn't see you, but I could hear you. Well, I I just got home. 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 From uh, from work, working ten hours. Mm-hmm. Oh. Woo. That's what you get for working in a restaurant, my dude. Or a yep. club. True. It is something that I'm used to. One of my favorite barbarians that I played, he was a superstitious barbarian that never ever used magic or traveled with anyone that actually used magic. And he believed magic was the root of every single evil in the entire world. Well, that and money. Well, yes. if you can, 
Like if you were playing a Dark Sun game, Superstition Superstition Totem would be really cool, really thematic. I'm not sure how much it would come up, but um, I like I like the plus two. I just don't know that it scales into stuff later. I believe you have there are feats later on that you get. There most certainly are. Yeah, that make it yeah, better. Su- so superstitious barbarians are always kind of a treat to play because in games like Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and their associated accoutrement, there, there's always sort of this underlying like if you want to do some cool shit, you better be a wizard or no one. Um, <laughs> but with the superstitious barbarian, you're like, aha, lightning nipples from Venus. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then that comes flying through the air to you, and you're like, I, I don't believe in Venus or nipples. And then they just. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're, you're, you're left with just lightning, and you don't give a shit about lightning, so it just it doesn't even work. You just. You just poof, and you save, and you take half of half damage, and. Yep. That is yeah, nice. That, that yep. tenth level wizard just launched ten d six at you for three points of damage, and you're like, "Well, that was that was a nasty static shock you gave me from all the other way inside the room." Ooh, goodness! I didn't know it was a tickle fight. Yes, you, you've gone and you've gone and singed the end of my fingertips with my three hundred hit points. <laughs> so, uh, you t- pick for your raging resistance two associated magical traditions: arcane and occult. Arcane and Primal, Divine and Occult, are Divine and Primal. Um, and then you gain resistance. The resistance from your Raging Resistance class feature applies to all damage you take from spells of those two traditions of magic, regardless of the type of damage dealt by the spell. They are really strong. <laughs> They're really strong because, like, your reflex save is your weakest, but it don't matter now. Because if they're th- throwing a fireball at you, what do you care? Yeah, Arcane and Occult are probably the two best for just resisting damage. Yeah. Uh, primal? Well, you're going to yes, have druids. I mean, I haven't, I haven't gone through the Primal spell list, but if I'm basing that off of like the kind of spell list the Druid got, the Druid spell list doesn't do nearly as much damage as, say, the Sorcerers. But now they do. Because... That's what I'm saying. Like, I haven't gone through the Primal spell list. Yeah, now they do because you can spec into it. Ah. So. Yeah, uh, having, having... They uh, get fireball all... and stuff like that, so... Mm. Ha- ha- having uh, all the, say, modifiers in 2E for the Barbarian is quite nice, especially in 1E. One of my favorite uh, caster builds were to use every single type of buff, uh, buff, uh, buff, uh, either divine or, or arcane to increase my save, give me extra DR, and just go into melee casting Shocking Grasp as a cantrip. Yeah, you can do that with Manic- Magical Lineage. Mm-hmm. And that is all of the totems, so now we're getting into the feats. Um, so, for the feats, you got one coming up at most, almost every level you get to pick something. Uh, you get Acute Vision, Raging Intimidation, uh, Moment of Clarity, and Sudden Charge as both of your, both of your, well, not both, all four of your feats that you can pick from at first level. Acute Vision is not bad if you've, I mean, let when you're raging, you get low light and dark vision, which, again, I don't understand why they do that. I mean... If it's if you got dark vision, you're going to see in low light. So, I I guess it is a situation. Uh, sometimes you're in an area where low light vision is the only light source you have, especially if you cannot see through magical darkness. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. but if it you have dark a... vision, you can see through low light. Yeah, generally vision like that. If you have 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 both of them it's a uh, having dark vision is best in those situations but it's situation if which one is more useful and mm-hmm. based upon the game i don't know maybe low light still gives you color that might be the only benefit to that that i know of um raging intimidation that's for your demoralized builds 
uh, because demoralize is an action you can use with intimidation and you're already going to spec, you're probably going to spec into that as a barbarian because you get three skill points and you only got three signature skills. So you're going to probably get legendary in at least one of them and it's probably going to be intimidation because it can yield you more results really. And you don't have to rage to demoralize, but you can get better at raging when at demoralizing when you're raging. So I know that. Uh, bye. Moment, mo moment of uh, clarity is quite nice. Bye. Moment of clarity is nice for a rage, uh, for a rage focus build. Mm hmm. I. Uh, you might run into a problem uh, when you get to using your actions in combat, because if you're having to face a lot of stuff, you you might burn a lot of actions. Because you, you concentrate deeply, pushing back your rage for a moment. Um, you add a additional action to a moment of clarity. Instead, you use it to action activity. The concentrator. So you get to use an activity. So you're not necessarily losing out. It's not a dead thing that you're doing, but you're using it to use a concentrate thing. So maybe if you're trying to cast in the middle of combat, mm. moment of clarity is useful based upon what type of build you are going with the barbarian. But it's, it's a situational feat at best. Yeah, it it's it's really situational to spend two actions to do a concentrate activity. You spend three actions if you want to do a two-action concentrate activity, which mm, I'm not. I'm not sure what you'd be going around doing. Maybe just as a basic barbarian, but yeah, I am unless thinking, you got some spell casting. I am thinking certain buffs uh, or or at least limited buffs that you get multi-classing into the wizard or the uh, or the cleric. Hmm. Yeah, that that'd be all I can see, but I don't know why your barbarian would be dipping into another thing. Because usually barbarians are good by themselves. Mm. A barbarian cleric, uh, if you build them right, they can blood be ranger, quite, though. can be Sorry. quite dead, quite quite deadly. Especially a blood ranger build it can be quite deadly based upon what you go with. Yeah, I can see, I can see what you and Levi are saying about the blood rager. And maybe, um, I don't know, you're so close to combat usually, and those usually have the manipulate trait, which means they're going to provoke an attack of opportunity. I don't know, I've always wanted to play a war prophet. You yeah. good. I don't know. But, moment of clarity, situationally useful. I guess if you're multi-classing, it would be, or if you're archetyping is what it would be in second edition. If you're archetyping, maybe it, it's a, a must-have, but not necessarily. Acute Vision still so, seems to be the best to me. So, for Acute Vision, I looked up Dark Vision and Low Light Vision. Uh, okay. The only thing, like, Low Light Vision is a creature with Low Light Vision does not treat creatures or objects within dim light as concealed. Okay. So, Dark vision is a creature with dark vision can see perfectly well in areas of darkness and dim light. Though such okay. vision is in black and white only. Yeah, so the only advantage is that it gives you color in low light vision. I guess. Uh, and so basically, well, based you on can't the fact see that they absolute darkness in dark vision. I mean, you you can see in absolute darkness with dark vision, but you can see in low light with dark vision too. So yeah, I was just saying it's kind of pedantic to put low light and dark vision mm. in the in the acute yeah. vision thing. Yeah, maybe it, it, they maybe they will revise it so so you pick either one as a feat. Uh, well, then you'd always pick dark vision. Yeah, it, it does really seem like maybe it just gives you that because it almost views low light vision as a prereq for dark vision. Maybe. They kind of do that in first edition, like really interstitially though. Like some things seem to assume that if you have dark vision, you also have low light, and some things don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They if 
there should be an as I think for consistency sake through the through the rule set it'd be better if they just if that was the assumption that was just put out there because it, it mm -hmm. basically says that in the entry it says like Levi read that dark vision uh, a creature with dark vision can see perfectly in low light and dark so anyway mm -hmm. sudden movie Moving well, on sudden, to the sudden charge is pretty good too. S sudden charge. If you're going with a charge, uh, uh, charge, uh, charger build for a for a barbarian, it is quite a good good feat as long as you're not using heavy armor. Oh, I will mention this: the lance does not require you to be mounted. Oh yeah, in second edition. So Tommy is at least going to be happy. He can play a barbarian cav cavalier now without a without a horse. I am a cavalier. I'm a horseless cavalier. A lance is just a spear. It's just a big spear. Well, just, I mean, yeah. not in real big... life, but in yeah, there, in, re in real life, it is. It's a lot heavier than a spear. Uh, well, it's because they were usually at metal halves. You're thinking of a like a jousting spear. Which, I mean, a jousting lance, which is not the same thing as a. A soldier's lance. Okay. Okay, but Titan Mauler though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. you would literally you would literally be a lancer from Monster Hunter. Yes. There you go. Monster, Monster you Hunter. You are, but you can be a halfling lancer from Mar Mar uh, from Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. That would from, be from from Martian Muncher. Martian uh, munching um, Monster Hunter. A cane. A D D D session when you are D D session when you are literally playing Monster Hunter is fun. Mm -hmm. See, I've never played Monster Hunter, but I hear good things. <laughs> it it's is fun. fun. It is a fun, fun, fun game. You should give it a try. All right. I'll think about it. Sudden charge. You get to basically do what the fighter does. You go, boom. You use two actions to get up there and hit, but you do so at your full uh, double your speed. Oh, that really helps the action economy at level one. Yeah, because yeah. it's two actions to perform effectively three actions. So, like, mm -hmm. rage, run up, probably run up realistically your... 40 feet. Yeah. Medium armor, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you're, if you're human, so probably about like 40, 40, 45 feet, and then attack. So I like it. I think it's a good idea, especially since you can use sudden charge while burrowing, climbing, flying, or swimming. You can move. You can the swimming rain. one sounds hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I am picturing. I am picturing a a a a a a a a a, a, trox, a, a trox barbarian now. You you think burrow? Oh. Yeah, he becomes a bull. Oh, scary. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah Troxa Barbarian. They are terrifying. They are a almost Trox a, Lancer. Yeah, Troxa, Trox Barbarians. They are almost as bad as 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 the one Orca 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 Barbarian CR1 monster. Well, as someone yeah, who's murdering PCs. As someone who's played a uh, Trox, I can attest that they are a lot of fun. Um, they, they are they are fun at a race. Second level. Acute scent, so you get to smell. Now, if you're a gnome, you can do that with a racial feed. But yeah, but all you can smell is cupcakes. No, it's you a cute scent. <laughs> oh god! Uh, my Little Ponies only. I don't know. No, stop! I've da, tried to make da, a joke, da, and you made it da, awful. Da, 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 da. You well, took it to a place you, you never should have gone. Hey, you talked about it. It's a cutie mark scent. So there no, you go. There you go. You're adding, you're putting words in my mouth. <laughs> All right. It's so, second, se second feet. Uh, the three feet says that Ashi is generally useful for, for most builds I can see. It is a cute scent if you're, if you're going with a scent focused build. Uh, Internal fortitude, great if you need to re reduce the status effects, and raging uh, courage. Mm. So one is, one's about overcoming sickness, one's about overcoming fear, and no escape is about chasing dudes down so they can't run away from you. I would actually say that 
I would prefer no escape. Yeah. Like, like yeah, because it's a reaction, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's a reaction. And it's not specifically fear or sick. Because mm-hmm. it's specifically to recover from being sick, which is its own condition. Which is internal, yeah, the internal food fortitude. Mm-hmm. With, and the other one is to reduce your frightened condition. With how, so, how, with, if, with, 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 with how, how, how there be diseases, poison, oh. and, poison and, and such are, those are worthwhile feats to go with based upon the nature of the game. So, Maybe sick is kind of interesting. You take a conditional penalty equal to this value on all your checks. Oh, so that's like nauseated. But, but not, not attack rolls and saves, just all checks. No, no, no. Those are checks. I'm, I think. Maybe. I don't I mean, know. I should rules. Give me a sec. He's rolling. All right. Give him time. Um, so if you were building around a scent character, like Donald said, I would, I would say this: do not get a cute scent, because it's only when you rage and it's only for ten feet. Instead, be a gnome and then be a barbarian. Tight. Yeah, modern. but didn't what if there are like we were talking about scent? I think the other week something about all the ways you could overcome scent. You can. Like it's, no, it's not as good in second edition as it, it could as... potentially be in first. Yeah. My my favorite way of uh, of uh, of avoiding scent monsters that uses it is uh, is using soap or even fake odors to hide your presence effectively. Yeah. And notes. Uh, attacks and saves are checks. Oh, yeah, no, internal fortitude just got much better. Yeah. Because <laughs> sick just got a whole lot worse than we thought. So. Yeah, well, it's kind of it's kind of like... Uh, uh, nauseated. Uh, no, not nauseated. Nauseated stops you from doing everything. Sickened. You kept telling us we were nauseated in beginnings and endings, and I was like, well, that's really bad. And you looked at it again, and it was like, no, you're just sickened. And I was like, that's much better. <laughs> that happened like four different times. Hey, and not... Not nauseated, nauseated is a pretty terrible effect. You didn't die. We didn't know. Not there. You didn't die anyway. Because I fact checked you. Yep. All right. But all in all, on this level, internal fortitude and no escape are my particular choices that I think would be best. You can make a case for raging courage if you have the feet to spare, I guess. So. Or if you run into fear effects a lot. Raging Courage is, it is only useful if you go up against monsters that use it a lot, such as High uh, CR Dragons. Mm-hmm. Or if Joe's your DM. Yeah, it's still only a plus one. you got to build it up. but I And it's only when you rage. That's kind of some of my problems with Barbarian Powers, is it's usually only when you rage, and a lot of stuff happens out of combat. So... Mm. Well, I mean, you can rage outside of combat. You can, but you need a reason to. And if you're not in uh, combat, I mean, mechan- okay. Mechanically, do you, you don't. walk? I mean, do you walk around mechanically? You don't. But are you going to make the case to your DM that, okay, DM, I'm going to walk around raging all day. I no, am just you fuming tell me all you've day. You've never been infuriated by something at the grocery store because I have. Yeah, but I, I mean, but the difference is it take, you have to sit violent. there for two seconds. You have to sit there for two seconds to get angry. Yes, yeah, I'm like this is not how bullshit it is that you won't take my coupon. Like this isn't a reactionary like normal anger. This is I know how to channel my anger into things. Ooh, they're not <laughs> expired. Where are you taking or them? To, you're just like, all right, I want to freak these people out. So I need to get angry about this. What gets me really angry? All right, give me two seconds to think about it. <laughs> oh, right, right. Like, I don't actually, I'm not angry about the coupons, but I want that deal. So I'm going to get angry so I can yell real loud. Right. <laughs> I said you price match. Right. My thing, I, I mean more like, uh, like the intestinal forti- uh, internal fortitude. Let me see. Is that only when, that's not only when you're raging. So that one and No Escape are the best, but Raging Courage is only when you're raging. So if you have a Frightened effect come over, you could still get frightened. You, you, you're not going to get that bonus unless you're raging. So you It's just not a around. bonus against the save, it just reduces the condition by one. Right. But by the time you're able to rage to reduce the condition, it will be gone. Yeah. 
that feed is goes away in one. That feed is is only useful if you know you're going up against creatures that use fear or fear a lot. Yeah. But it's a situa situational feat at best. All right. Fourth, anyway, fourth. Uh, fast fast movement. movement. When you're raging, you're accelerated ten. Your movement speed increases by ten feet. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. A ra raging as as raging uh, athlete. While you are, are raging, you can climb. Uh, climb. Uh, you gain a climb speed and swim swim speed. Equal to your equal to your uh, land, land land speed, so that just makes sudden charge all that much funnier. Yeah. So, so the so, so you can have a aqua, uh, have a Aquaman barbarian in the water and charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fucking and you're a horrifying Tarzan lance charging build. And and the uh, the if you're trying to build the Jason Momoa Aquaman, he's a lot more barbarian. Than he is fighter. Yeah, good, good lord, that's horrifying. Uh, and then swipe the last one. Based upon the type of game you're in, swipe is quite useful. You take a mighty swing against two Egyptian enemies, making a melee strike, and compare the attack result to the AC up to up to two folds. Both of whom must be within your melee reach and adjacent to each other. Roll damage only once and apply each creature you hit. You, If you critically hit one target and not the other, roll the extra critical hit hit damage separately. Swipe counts as two attack for your multiple uh, for your multiply attack penalty. So based upon if you're in a mass combat game, this is quite useful at the feat. Well, that brings up a question that I have. When a when a feat says a swipe counts as uh, this whatever counts as two attacks for your multiple attack penalty, does that mean you're making it without the penalty, and then after the attack is done, you have the you would have the cumulative penalty on your third attack? No, I yes. think this means. In the... Oh wait, sure? no, because I you... think this would mean oh. you would make one attack at a minus five. I don't. Well, okay, so how it phrases it, you make the attack. Can compare the result to the AC of up to two foes. Yeah. Uh, and like you make the attack, and multiple attack penalty goes afterwards. So it, it looks, although it doesn't specify, a lot of times these ones say when you take the penalty for it. Right. And and I've been reading for the audiobook several places it does this, uh, like with the fighter, especially for the two weapon fighting. A a swipe counts as two attacks for your multiple attack penalty. So this a swipe. Okay, well this this might be something to ask Tommy to clarify with Bowman because we're not important enough to talk to Dad. I I think uh, with the way how it is written, you apply the um, uh, penalty to to this, but this is just my interpretation of it. Yeah, I I would I would rule it as you make the one attack and a minus five. I don't know. I don't. I don't know that that's the intended way, and I I actually read it the opposite way. Because it swipe it. counts as, as as two attacks for your multiple attack penalty. Not that you're taking a multiple attack penalty, but that when you take when the multiple attack penalty is counted, it now counts as two instead of one. So your next attack would be a minus ten. ten. So you can basically make two attacks. At normal, but the next attack would be at a minus 10. I think is how it's supposed to be. But I could That's be how I also think, but I am still researching exact rules. Haven't it... come up to a useful answer as of yet. Okay. Alright, so we'll we'll leave that on needs more clarification and move on. If it if it's the other if it's the way I'm thinking, it's pretty good. Otherwise, eh, just make uh, the attack. Well, I mean, you can just make the attacks, but all Use right. Use a forceful weapon; you'll be fine. Yeah, she's forceful. You get specialization at whatever I level. I think that so far has been my favorite weapon trait has been forceful. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, sixth level animal skin. Oh, this is ah. where the stuff starts to come in for the totems. So, 
a lot of my two of my favorite uh, totem uh, is uh, it have to be the uh, dragon totem brass and all of the dragon totem feats that you can choose and then the animal animal an, animal animal skin based upon based upon how much of a nature character the barbarian you're playing is this is this is quite quite useful based upon a nature theme in theme theme, theme, theme game Stephanie I can picture a a a very Aztec Jaguar warrior picking the animal skin feet yeah um all right what to do it gives you a plus one when you're raging it gives you a plus one conditional bonus to AC instead of taking the minus one penalty to AC so you basically negate that and the thickness of your hide gives you a dexterity cap of plus four. So basically, it's a plus one to your AC when you're raging to negate the penalty. Yeah, and you're no, not. No, gonna, no. You're probably not going to have a turbo hide. It's AC. it's effectively plus, plus one two. instead of minus one, so it's effectively plus two. So I mean, it's it's all right. It's a six level feat, though. That's pretty good. Plus two to mm-hmm. AC. Plus two to AC when you're raging. I mean, it already says up here that you can be benefiting from mage armor or bracers of armor while this is happening, which means you have a- you're have you presumed to have access to them at that point. So Yeah. But by I then, mean, they're also, like, plus two. Right. It's just so, a strict bonus to your AC. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Mm. But it, uh, if, be- you're, if you're running with a Dexy boy, it's still okay. It's though. still good. Because at 6th Dex- level, you're not going to be above the plus four, usually. Yeah. A, I would imagine a a dexterity based uh, barbarian, and using all the all the spell buffs and items that increase our AC overall that that actually stack. This is a pretty good feat to go with for that build. Mm, it, it, I'm I'm seeing where it could be good. Oh, uh, but yeah, it I'm, is I'm a okay situ- to... it is a situational feat at best. No, it's, it's a static increase. It doesn't blow my it's pants only, off, but it's it's. I like it. Yeah, it's it's only for the animals anyway, so it's Please. not like you can take it without it. Uh, yep, cleave, your melee strike. Uh, uh, your melee strike kills or knocks a creature unconscious, and another foe is adjacent to them. And that that's kind of been my problem with cleave ever since I've seen it, is that they have to be right there. But with the barbarian, you're probably yeah, gonna be up there. Yeah, of course they anyway. do. You're well, cleaving through one dude into the guy next to him. Yeah, I get that. Yuck. Um, Yuck. I don't usually position my enemies that way, just because it never comes up. I mean, if you're fighting a lot of dudes at once, you run out of space. Cleave. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Cleave, um, the other foe has to be adjacent to the one you knocked out in this edition. Was it that way in the past edition, or did they just have to be in your threat range? Uh, I think Cleave, they had to be side by side. Mighty Cleave, they did not. Okay. The feat uh, Cleave, this is a situational feat at best, how useful it is based upon the game. It depends Um, on if you fight, like, several smaller things or one bigger thing. Really, that's, that's, that's that's how it breaks down. And how far and how spread out your GM usually has the encounter. Because mm-hmm. my, my encounters usually end up being kind of spread out. So this wouldn't yeah, come so up it, in a lot of them. It's definitely, it's a feat that's like, is either quite good or kind of blah. Mm-hmm. In, a mass, uh, in a mass combat type of game, Cleave is very useful based upon the number of, of creatures in the immediate area. Alright, so Dragon Totem Breath. There this you is, go. This is your breath this weapon. Is, it's this, good. You effectively get a breath weapon, which is pretty nice. Uh, uh, the uh, the the uh, damage actually increases. So by six level, you get to do sixty six uh, damage, and there's not a damage cap, unlike the actual spell in one e that does the same thing effectively. Mm-hmm. And it's the normal four degrees of success. Uh, your breath's area, liner cone, and damage type match your chosen as a dragon. This ability counts as a spell of half your level rounded up. 
And that rounded up is important, for sure. So at 15, it would be 8. Mm-hmm. So, six damage per barbarian level. Well, I mean, I suppose technically it caps at twenty, but yeah, and it can be countered by some. It is something that can be countered, so that's interesting. I guess that I guess that means I haven't looked at dragons yet in the bestiary, but can you counter a dragon's breath? With resistances. What do you mean countered? It's an ability that counts as a spell, so spells yeah. can be countered. Um, well, half I think your level maybe rounded that, up. That refers to the DC to save. No. Nah. I mean, spell level doesn't affect C- DC anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I know in one, one E, some of the high level abjurations, abjuration spells function like DR or just simply stop a dragon breath, a breath attack, but those are like 7th, 8th eight, uh, eight level ab- abjuration spells. Oh, like spell immunity? Yes, spell muty is one of those that that works against dragon breath, unless it's a otherwise dragon breath is a natural weapon, non magical. Uh, well, either way, gi- I mean, it's, either you just spell it or you don't. No, it's a giant stature. That's it's pretty good. You can. I I still think this is hilarious for the you grow small... to incredible size. Yep. You become a so this so this small creature goes up one and two size categories to become this large halfling. <laughs> so I, I imagine it as a goblin just because they're so wonkily proportioned that it's even more terrifying at large. No, oh, oh, it's like a imagine? pineapple on the end of a pipe cleaner. So so I'm I'm <laughs> so I'm picturing picturing the halfling. So so he's medium size size now. So no no no. You become so, large. You become large. So it says so, specifically. So I'm curious. So is there a happening word for 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 very very large happenings? <laughs> Fucking big, big. huge. Um, like but, at that point, they're just double lings. <laughs> yeah, twice lings. Twice lings, not half lings. We're twice lings now. Um, it says your equipment grows with you, which is really the bonus that you're looking for. Yeah, if you're using why the sluggish Titan condition monitor. remains the same. Yeah. So your weapon's even larger size causes it to have the same effects as normal for that ability. Which means... So, okay. You... There's a part of me that wonders exactly how this works. Because if you're small and you go up two size categories, and it was a weapon for a large size creature, does it count as going up two size categories? Mm. It says your equipment grows with you. So I, that's I, the I would specific have, uh, wording. That may not be what I, they're intending, but that's the specific wording. I, okay, okay, if it's off that specific wording, then the weapon becomes unwieldable. I assume, not if you got uh, Titan Mauler. Uh, no, I, it does, because it would be two size categories larger than you. Yeah, I assume... Mm-hmm. I assume by the wording of it... Oh, I see what you mean, Kane. I assume by the wording of the gear, unless you have certain weapons and builds in in mind, your gear effectively becomes size uh, size uh, size uh, large by uh, default. So, okay. So a point Kane was bringing up was that in the wording of Titan Mauler, like if you're smaller medium, you can use large weapons, but if you are not smaller medium, you can only use weapons one size category larger. So when you go up to large, you can only use huge. So the so th- that means that the medium sized human, like like Amari, when she sizes up, she won't have any problems wielding it. Yeah, but your but, halfling, who's already using a large sized broadsword, would have a gargantuan sized broadsword, which would, would be not so be much able cooler. to wield it anymore. It would be cool though. It'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> So it would seem well, more reasonable under those rules to rule it as going one size category larger than your end result. Yeah, so they probably need to fix... They probably need to do something about that. Yeah. Um. So there you go, Paizo, a legit thing that does need reworked. Um, I just need some clarification. Yeah. But Spirit I like of it. Spirit of Yeah, Spirit of Defense. 
Uh, you call forth protective spirits to ward off ranged attacks, blah, blah, blah. So it's basically you get a, um, a ranged attack must succeed at a DC 5 flat check or the attack misses. It basically gives you the first level of concealment, I think it is. Or yeah, 20, it's, yeah. Well, it's, it's basically a 25% miss chance. My question 20%. is, does this stack with uh, whatever it's called, soft Conceal. cover people in the way thing? Oh, screening? Yeah, screening, there it is. Does as it far as I screening? can tell, because if it didn't stack, it, okay, it would have said you gained screening, I think. Yeah. So I think they would have to make two DC5 flat checks, which is a 20% miss chance. Yeah, so that's a lot better. That's that's really nice. That makes the spirit one just as quite quite strong as it's always been. It's, it's pretty good. One, eight, ten. So that's a uh, effective 36% miss chance by the time you use both of them. So a third of the time they'll miss, ish. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. That's- that is pretty good, knowing... Depending knowing. on how melee heavy or not heavy, I suppose, your game is. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the melee people you can kill. Yeah. The ranged people, you need them to not damage you as much for a bit while you get to them. That's also true. Because those arrows of slaying hurt. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, they sure do hurt other people. Because Quiblin would be dead if it wasn't for the arrows of slaying. I'm just saying. It dro- yeah, dro- I... D- one 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 point then that I always paranoid about when going up going up against drow, it is drow poison for how deadly it is. Well, in what? first edition, it's not deadly at all. Yeah, I mean, second edition is going to be more deadly, so I'm paranoid whenever going up 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 uh, up against drow, knowing how deadly drow poison is. That's the problem with you tabletop role players. You're also paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yes Which playing, playing playing rogues. I have be- become more, more more paranoid about about chess. I just see a single chess in a room. Yeah. Is it branding? It might be witch hunter. <laughs> yeah, witch my... hunter. Superstition totem: a creature within your reach performs a spell casting action. Make a melee strike against the triggering creature at a minus two penalty if the attack hits and you disrupt that action. This strike does not take or count it towards your multiple attack penalty. Nice. That seems so harsh. Ye- this is like combat we 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 reflex in one e to a certain a- a- extent. It was mixed it's, with this disruptive. This is actually fairly similar. Yeah, I was gonna say this is actually fairly similar to the witch hunter uh, rage power from first edition. Yeah, but it's like nice. it says, it it disrupts it. It does well. Uh, it's a, a reaction. This Dis- disrupt is like a pseudo condition now. It, it's, it's not it's um, spell. Yeah, you lose the spell. So, yeah. um, it's not bad because you only take a minus two penalty. The strike is a reaction, and it does not count toward just like an attack of opportunity. It would not count towards your multiple attack penalty. Now it would be better. If you took, if you just had the ability to, um, if you just had the ability to do an AOO, that would be better. But you don't have that ability as a as a barbarian anymore. So this is as close as you're going to get, as far Only as the fighters get those. Yeah. Well, eventually you can pick up stuff. I think you get reactions. Only the fighters for stuff. start with. Them. Yeah, and they get more of them too. They get more stuff. All right, Mo- animal rage. <sighs> Eighth level. You feats. are an animal. You you are an animal. That's, You're that's a strange cool. animal. That's what oh. I know. Moving but- along, renewed vigor. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, animal rage. Kane, take 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 it over. Okay, oh dear. When you rage, you transform into a medium form of your totem animal, gaining the animal trait in addition to your normal traits. All your gear is absorbed into your form, all constant abilities of your gear still function, but you can't activate any item abilities. Uh, When you transform, you gain the following. Ignore your armor check penalty and speed reduction. You gain the same number of temporary hit points that you normally gain when you are raging. You gain low light vision. Your animal form prevents you from casting spells, breaking, or taking most actions with the manipulate trait that requires your hands. The GM determines which manipulate actions can be used if there are doubts. 
You can dismiss this effect by spending an action. This action has the rage and concentrate traits. Uh, while an animal form, you gain the attack. Hold on. I gotta like, zoom in. <laughs> I gotta, when I say zoom in, I mean I'm gonna move my face closer to the monitor. <laughs> Well, in animal form, you gain the attacks, movement types, and special abilities listed in your chosen animal, and you retain the attacks, uh, the attack or attacks from bestial rage. See table three dash three, animal totems on page fifty five. You choose the specific type of animal you turn into within the broader category, such as a lion or snow leopard from cat. This has no effect on your animal's form or size statistics. And that's why I list of animals. <laughs> yeah, list of animals. Eight animal. gives you speed, uh, twenty five feet. Climb speed twenty and scent. It's it gives you three things instead of just two. Yeah, Not well, bad. I mean, scent just kind of feels like an afterthought at that point. Yeah, and animal animal rage. Based upon which one you go with, it can be quite a quite a quite a, a quite deadly, especially for a charger build. My personal. Yeah, a lot of these just seem like speeds. Well, I like the frog. The frog. Because yeah. you can give someone a tongue lashing. Tongue so. For 1d4 bludgeoning damage and a swim speed. What does the frog have scent? I actually don't know. I don't know why they gave... They gave scent to everybody, which... Eh? Yeah. Frogs aren't that know. good as smellers. Yeah, cats. Let's get to climb and swim. Yeah, but... cats. Cats, I can't see... See... Being... The cat makes sense. Deer. The bear makes sense. The deer makes sense. The shark makes sense, but only in specific circumstances. The bull does the snake, make sense because they the don't see very well. The snake and the wolf well. make sense, but the the bull and the ape and the frog, I have questions about. Well, I as someone with cattle, the bull does make sense to have scent because they don't see very well. That's actually mm, how oh, they get around. Fair. Like deer. I feel real bad for the bear because the cat it's everything yep. it gets, more speed, and it has better attacks. Yeah, uh, I agree yeah, with you. They and they, which is funny, because they make they make a point in the druid entry when they were talking about it in the blog posts about how how lackluster the bear was in first edition. Yeah, right. So they beefed up the bear for second edition, unless you're a barbarian, apparently. Yeah. And then the bear berry and it just kind of tits up in the water. Yep. And moving on to the next two feats, uh, renewed uh, vigor. You you pause to recover some of some of your raging vigor. You gain temporary hit points equal to half of your level plus your plus your constitution modifier. So. So, so this is quite nice to get temporary hit points if you're not relying on uh, on on a caster to give you temporary hit points. You probably are, though. Yeah, true. Yeah, when the the problem is, it's temporary hit points, so they only last. It doesn't specify how long they last. Do they last until they're gone? Do they stack with your other temporary hit points? Probably it's not. It's probably. It says it's a rage thing, so I'm assuming it'll end with your rage. Yeah, so there you go. Which I mean, means to recover some of your raging vigor. So I think this is an action you spend while raging, after your temporary hit points have depleted. Been depleted, yeah. Which I mean, isn't bad, but you're supposed to be using those rounds to kill things and getting as many. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know what to tell you. It is a. It is you're just preparing for that ass kicking you're gonna take on that fourth round. It is a. It is very situ situational. We knew to figure how useful it is in the fight. I All mean, of the skills are situational. Yeah, the, most everything's gonna be situational. That's very true. Um, but I don't know. Oh, a quick note about the animal thing, though. I didn't see where it says that the transformation ends. Which assume, means it would uh, end when you stop raging? You I, turn into a duck and you're a duck forever. Uh, <laughs> looking, looking, looking at the rage... An angry uh, duck. An looking, angry duck. Looking ah, at, fuck! Otherwise known as a goose. 
<laughs> you <laughs> become looking, a Canadian goose. Uh, looking at the rage powers, unless it's a there is a set set time, I assume it it actually lasts as long as your 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 raging lasts. Right. Which, I mean, if that's that's kind of weird because then you just autumn you just. Magic for them shape shifting that heavily is weird for me because I mean they're for like eighteen seconds all of a the sudden they're bra and their form changes and bra because you got to use this this is an extra action so you have to rage and then for six si- oh that's true you have to and rage. then for six seconds you're tired and a normal person yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah like, you <clears throat> become a man again <sighs> it's like. I don't know. I mean, that's no, that, that's really you know weird. You know what? That that makes that makes the the skit I was talking about even funnier because you yeah. turn into a deer for the highest speed possible. So you're <laughs> you're forty five feet every move action. So you're you're hauling ass for 40, 120, 135 feet every full round of movement. Yeah. And then you hit the fourth round. You turn back into a naked ass man and face plant into the dirt and. <laughs> And then you take fast movement to amp that up by 10 feet per action. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, even uh, Yeah, 165 feet per, per full round of movement. Can, can, can... So you're hauling ass across this field at 50 fucking miles an hour. Can... You turn back into a man hovering across the ground. You take 20 D6 points of damage from skid mark as you, like, d- d- destroy your body on the tarmac. Yeah, because you're moving miles per hour at that point. It's like... Okay. Hey, Kane, also to make your character go faster, add mm-hmm. haste in there. You get an extra move action. Jesus. <laughs> so another 150. That's true, another just play an feet. elven barbarian. Yeah. You really could yeah. build an elven barbarian, but it'd be... Your your con hit is there. It's real. You gotta spec into that hard to make up for that as a barbarian. But all that aside... Suddenly, su- sudden, sudden leap. When making a, a sudden charge, instead of uh, striding, you can leap. If you succeed at a athletic check when you make the leap, you can move the same distance you move with a long jump. Even if you're uh, leaping very vertically, you determine the DC for the height you're jumping <laughs> using. The DC of a long, 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 long jump. After your 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 strike, you you fall to the ground. If you're in the air, if the distance of the fall is no more than the height of your jump, you can you 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 take no 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 damage and and uh, and 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 land upright. So, uh, so effectively functioning, functioning like a waterfall to a certain extent. Well, to a so point. You, uh, you, you wouldn't die, but you would be doing roughly thirty kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you, Luckily, you you're could the one die. to take it. Um, <clears throat> but you're in your fatigue round, so you take it when you crash land. Yeah. So no temporary that's, that's hit I'm points. Saying. When you turn back into a naked, tired ass man, <laughs> you hit the ground doing thirty. It probably wouldn't kill you, but you it would hurt real bad. And then you have to rage with those hit points missing. Um, with the sudden leap, I like that they gave this option to the barbarian because the long jumps DCs aren't particularly high, and you're going to be very <sighs> strong. You could be Hulk <laughs> leap by the end of the game. You could be just... Hulk leaping. <laughs> They think they're so fancy with their flying. I will smite me from the sky. I will, yeah, as I as I turn back into a man and my corpse fucking descends <laughs> from the stratosphere to strike you at terminal velocity. Uh, well, there are no flying cre- no flying rage totems, which is you know there no, should be not like anymore. Not there anymore. should be like you an eagle. Get, li- you can't literally get so angry you take it off. <laughs> You should. They should be like an eagle and a vulture, just to be fun. <laughs> they should. I. I am kind of surprised that they don't have an eagle or something in here. Yeah, those are very common totems in all societies that are tribal, all societies in general. 
Yeah, most uh, tribal societies have a bird of uh, have a bird or some flying creature as a part of the culture. Well, I mean, you picture yourself as a tribal society. You saw some shit flying around in the sky. You'd be like, "How they do that? How they do that?" That's cool. I like it. All right, uh, tenth level. Come and I... get me. The Beat titular. Ten. Come and get me. The titular. Come and get me for the for the female barbarian. Uh, <laughs> you open yourself to attacks, basically, and when you're raging, you are flat-footed, and, well, this is an action, so you're not always flat-footed, but when you do this, uh, I think is how it's supposed to be worded, because that's not how it's worded right here. It says, while you are raging, you are flat-footed, and damage rolls against you, gain a plus two circumstance bonus. If a creature hits you, that creature is flat-footed against the next attack you make against it before the end of your next turn. If you hit it before the end of your next turn, you gain a temporary hit points equal to your constitution modifier. So if you uh, archetyped in with Rogue as well, this could be really good. <laughs> it sounds hilarious. Because you get hit points off of your... Uh, your hit points come from your... Uh, class. They don't come from your archetype. So, you would still get your d12. Yeah, no, it's still good. It's just different. It's not It's not as uh, hyper-abusable as it was in first edition. Mm. Uh, Kane, is it, it just me, but come and get me being next to the barbarian? Uh, I, oh no, I'm she's, just... she's asking for it, and you're gonna go <laughs> over there and be like, hey, and she's gonna literally rip your jaw. Oh your face <laughs> yep just so you know kane you can get so angry you fly we're just <laughs> no, not to the can. next page dang it <laughs> so however if we look at furious sprints we have the key factor in your skit that you didn't even know you needed stride, stride up, up to four times four times your speed in a, you can add an additional action to stride up to six times your speed in a straight line instead <laughs> So you just double. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, you wait, gotta wait. calculate that up, Kane. So 60, you're a deer. It would just be double. You'd be doing sixty kilometers an hour. <laughs> no, but Kane, you gotta Kane. be an elf. You gotta be an elf. You Kane, gotta be Kane, an elf Kane. For, for 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 this uh, for this uh, for this uh, for this racing build, go go with the elf with all the uh, speed increase feats. Uh, go with the deer. Add haste, and then. And then furious, uh, furious, furious, furious sprint. Okay, and... so you're 30 for an elf. You took fleet once, so that's another 5 points. You have the barbarian feet for another 10 points. You took furious <laughs> sprint, so that doubles the number of strides you can take in an action. And you get an additional 5 because there's the elven feet nimble, in addition to the base feet fleet. Okay, so that's another 5 feet for, for, for nimble. <laughs> so you're looking at a base speed of 50. And then, Times uh, 6. And then adding haste so, in as well. There you and go. then yeah, and haste in for one one more one more run. So that's that's fifty times seven, which is three hundred and fifty feet over six seconds. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! You are the flash, is what you are. That's that's now what imagine you use. I'm sure I this forgot something and you could get it higher, but we're just gonna stay <laughs> if you is, is... Well hasted is a I mean, quickened is a condition, conditional bonus. Which means it can go up to ten. I've seen it. I think a a monk a barbarian. <laughs> the numbers are going to be higher than than that. Oh well, that's not that's not something in the play test at the moment. But man, you could go so fast. But this is for that. This is for the skit, though. Yeah, for the skit. If you eight point three feet per second. <laughs> <laughs> it's seventeen point seven six meters per second. Per second, meters per second. <laughs> <laughs> you are... yeah, that's four. Yeah, I was right. That's forty miles an hour, which is sixty miles. It was just sixty k. So you would be a smear on the ground if you struck that with no gear on. <laughs> oh, and you'd have to because you're an animal, so you can't. Yeah. You don't have weapons, but you can at least have medium armor. Moving on to the next. <gasps> okay, great sleeve. Yes, great cleave. This is the the cleave that you actually want, I guess. Let me make sure. A strike that kills. Strike that doesn't. 
Uh, you can continue when to make strikes. When you cleave, strikes. if your strike also kills the target or knocks the target unconscious, you can continue to make melee strikes until you make a strike that does not kill or knock unconscious a creature, or until there are no creatures adjacent to the most recent creature you attacked while cleaving, whichever comes first. Yeah. This is a, this so is you, a, if you hit a dude and he goes down, you just keep hitting dudes until he stops. The, until they stop. Till, till they stop falling asleep. Yeah. The. My thing with it is they have to be right beside each other. And I just, I don't know, maybe I've never been in the type of game that does it, but I've never had more than two, maybe three people right beside each other. whirlwind strike. That's the one where you, like, you hit anyone who's beside right. you. Right, I know, I, I get that one. But, I mean, I thought with Cleave in first edition you could hit somebody, and then if you had someone else in your threat range... That was their buddy. You could hit them too, and then continue that with great cleave. That's how I, I remember cleave working, but I may be wrong. A great take. I'd great like take. it to have that if that if that was what they were gonna do. A great take, great take, great cleave. This is one of those situational feats. How useful it is. Yeah, that I guess that's why I've never built into a cleave or a, a cleave build is because of how much you depend on the positioning of your enemies rather than your positioning yourself. It's, it's really dependent on your enemies instead. It is, it is the same you thing. You force people into a bottleneck. Yeah. It, it, is the, it is the same issue when, when it comes to the vital, 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 vital strike builds. Well, I'd argue that vital strike builds are, are better than cleave builds because you will kill somebody with a vital strike. Not necessarily yeah. with cleaving. Uh, knockback. Knockback. Meh. You're just going to say something, McCain. I heard you. I heard you. Uh, okay, so knockback. Not very. No, I was. I, I said, eh, and then I looked directly at Great Cleave, and I was like, wait, we just did that one. Okay. And... Knockback if takes you hit an him, action. You can push him back five feet. Yeah. I don't have to though. I can just. I can just collide with him chest first, doing forty miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Be the barbarian. <laughs> What if you were a dwarf going however many miles per hour and you had the boulder run roller feet? Mm -hmm. That'd be hilarious. Well, I mean, that's, just build that's up the speed. It's <laughs> its own action, but. And you purposely yeah. fall? You trip yourself on purpose at the Whoa. end of your life? Oops. Uh, but. Yeah. The 300 pounds of dwarf colliding with your chest at 40 miles an hour. <laughs> But but as for knockback itself, how often is just shoving someone back five feet going to be that great? Well, the I mean, thing they changed with the shove action or the the push a lot of the pushback actions is they no longer stipulate that it has to be into a square they can safely occupy. I mean that's yeah. true. You if you can position them like if you're on a ledge or if you're over a, around a trap or a pit. Or uh, there's like a magical rune that they're that's right there. I mean, it, it could be and useful, this, but this is also a knockback for no, no, no check. Check. You hit yeah. him, and then you can be like, "I spend an action." He moves. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. got to spend an action to do it. And as a as a barbarian, you're already having to watch how many actions you're spending. At least, at least how I would play the barbarian. Because I'm risk averse. Like, like we've said, I think a dozen times already. It's situational. All this I'm, stuff is situational. Why is that so situational? Imagine that you have options. Options. Yeah, it's, it's modular for a reason. Good God, it's just not an option I'm a particular fan of. I, I can't I know, see I, me. I like the knockback effects, and maybe that's just me. But I like I... the ability to manipulate where things exist on a grid. I, I think do... the fact that it's only five feet is what yeah. mehs me. Yeah. That's the meh for me, because it's only five feet and it's a tenth level feet. That's uh, fair. I should well, say I think, ten like, to fifteen I think if feet. They, like a god. If they changed it to like much the same, I think it's with the athletics. Like If you exceed the DC by so many, you can move them more. I think if they added in like a stipulation in here where like if you're... Like on a critical hit, you move them ten or yeah. fifteen or whatever, or like by if by whatever number you exceed, you can move them greater than five feet. 
Yeah, because if you move them five feet, they're just going to step back towards you. Yeah. Because even even just doubling it to ten would be a lot better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then they'd have to move, use a full move to get to you, which might provoke an attack of opportunity from your ally. As if you teamed up with your fighter buddy. Look at him. Yeah. He's so special. The Terrifying mar- owl. Intimidating glare requirement. It does have the auditory trait, so that's something to remember, as well as Intimidating Glare also has the visual fa- uh, yeah, trait. Yeah, if you're right. using that, that oh-so-prevalent sign language in 2nd edition, mm. it matters. It matters. Yeah, ter- 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 terrifying Howl. You unleash a Terrifying Howl. All, all frightened creatures within 30 feet must uh, succeed at a will save. Uh... Will save against your intim- intim- intimidation DC. We, we regardless of the result, regardless of it of its saving spell, the creature is uh, is a uh, is, is a is a bolstered against your terrifying terrifying howl. Ooh, this is definitely something I would give Ark if I were going to rebuild him for second edition. Mm-hmm. On a failure, the target gains the fleeing condition for one round as long as it remains frightened. A critical failure. It, it, it is even worse. Yeah, it's not. It's a. Uh, it's pretty good if you're building into that spec. It's pretty good. For a for a uh, terror for a terror intim- intimidation build, this is quite quite great. I mean, I would have just taken it because Ark was a giant fucking dog. Yeah, he's a no. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Dragon totem wings. Hey. There you go. Dragon. Now you can fly. The dragon. You sprout dragon wings from your back that are the same color as your Trojan dragon. While you are raging, you gain a fly speed of 40 feet. Okay, here's my question. You're flying up there at 40 feet. Yep. You stop raging for a round. <laughs> and you fall for, for 60 feet. You I don't know, man. Pretty, you I can, don't know. You can't, you can't rage while you're fatigued, man. You're going to fall there, for three movements. Yeah, movements. there's, there's got to be a thing in here. Because if it's like, oh, you hit rage, you hit round four and you're still in the air, you're fucked, bro. Yep. All that all that dragon's got to do is just avoid you for a few yeah, for rounds. three rounds. Which was pretty easy as a dragon. But what he does is he stays close enough that you can maybe get one hit in on him. Like he gives you three mo- two moves and you can hit him. And he keeps carrying you diagonally up so that eventually you're at like 600 feet above no, the ground. No, especially if as a dragon, he like he just flies up 60 feet. And you're mm-hmm. going to have to fly up 60 feet to get at him. Which means Minimum. Six, which means 30 damage when you come back down. Minimum. So, I don't know. That's... I don't know that they thought about that when they were thinking about yeah, giving the, the them more, wings. The more we see these these like these feats that are like, wow, it's raging, and I was like, okay, I get that for 18 seconds, and then it goes away. Like that. Your yeah. wings po- suck back in yeah. close to your back. Oh, no, that sounds uncomfortable. It's gotta be like, <laughs> it's, got, it's, it's more like, ah, oh, you're this big, you're Shenron up in the sky, and then all of a sudden, boop, you're Chibi Gohan. I, I'm 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 thinking the rage uh, powers. Uh, at least the playtest, uh, they took into consideration how how long the average combat lasts. So between three to uh, seven rounds, uh, on the average. So yeah, but if it lasts seven rounds, you're gonna fall to your death in the fourth. Yeah, you're gonna fall to your death almost two times. Uh, Predator's Pounce requires the animal totem, and that you not be wearing heavy armor, which you're probably not going to be doing anyways as a barbarian. Yep. You choose the distance to your prey. Yo, you close. close. You choose. What the fuck is wrong with me? You're drunk. You close the distance to your prey in a blur, pouncing on them before they can react to your sudden appearance. You stride up to your speed and make a strike at the end of your movement for only one action. Uh, yeah. If you were unseen or sensed before you began the action, you remain unseen or sensed until after your strike. It's nice. It's pretty. Yeah, that just is nice. Really nice. 
your cat, you move 40 feet, bite them, claw, claw. And they don't even yeah. know. You, you're built, you're built, you're specced into that rogue. See? You're architect yeah. into the rogue. You're unseen. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's going to be the meta for Barbarians, is dipping into a little bit of rogue. Well, maybe not, because your sneak attack damage really doesn't advance very quickly. Yeah, Kane, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pitch, picturing the uh, racing, racing deer, deer build, build now, taking pressure pounds. It's an unseen deer. <laughs> it's an unseen deer. It just well, gores you. I, you like, know what, what you, was that? You might actually get. Does, does, does fleet and nimble? Does all that only apply to your land speed? No, I, th I think, think it applies so. to all your speed. Because if it if it applies to all of them with the dragon totem wings, you'd be going even faster. See, but you can't. But because uh, you're an animal totem as a oh. as a deer. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh no, yeah, you would you'd be going even faster anyways because I was just taking the baseline speed, not the forty five you would have for being a deer. Kane, we asked you for the numbers, man. Ah oh, man, I did the I did the math wrong. Oh. Oh. Mm. All right, spell sunder for your su superstition totems Ooh. makes you want to play a superstition monk, uh, a superstition barbarian. Being an elf wouldn't have mattered at all. That's true. Not if you're a deer. Um, you draw <coughs> upon the superstition, sure, 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 fury uh, to destroy a spell. So basically, you're getting to destroy the spell, sunder the spell. Sure, 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 sure. sure. Um. Uh, let me see. Make a melee strike. A uh, or an unarmed strike, either one, against a creature, object, or spell manifestation. So it could be an item, could be a, a magical creature. That's interesting. Uh, such as a wall created by wall of fire. Could be a summoned creature, for all that matters. Whether or not you succeed at your strike, the target is bolstered to your spell sunder. On a success, you attempt to counteract a spell, a single spell active on the target. The counteract attempt uses a level equal to your half your barbarian level rounded up. If your counteract attempt would require a check, your result is the same as the result of your attack roll. With any necessary adjustments for the difference in counteract level. Ooh, that's nice. It's nice. Let me see. Feet 12. So you're facing things that are 15th. Their spellcaster... They're probably going to have counteract of their level rounded up, so they're only two ahead of you-ish. Yeah, it's doable. Well, and the thing is, like, if you're facing things actually at your level, like, you just have to make a really high attack roll. Yeah, if it's, like, if you're facing a 12, a, a level 12 creature, and your feet, le you just took this feat, then yeah, you got this in the bag. Or, yeah. or if they're or if they're archetyping, if they're archetyping into Jesus another class, Christ. that means that you are able to counter that even easier. Like you won't even have to won't even have to do anything. Your counteract level yeah. is just that. So Okay, bad. so I was wrong. Hasted as a deer elf Hasted with nimble ten. and fleet and that feat that makes you accelerate at ten while you rage. Um, you would be doing 52 miles per hour or 83 kilometers per hour. There you go. 52 miles an hour. Hey, I, normal highway legal. Yep. Yeah, you'd be, yeah, you'd be, you'd be going highway speed. I don't know. See, what, what happens if you make a leap and you try to glide on the, on the momentum you've carried through for the next six seconds? Before I you, don't know. I think before you're, you rage I think again. The, the, the rate of acceleration based upon gravity, which is what, like, two point nine three meters per second. Yeah, you would you'd hit the ground before six seconds passed. Yeah. Oh wow. Well. I wasn't wasn't it nine point eight meters per second squared? You're probably right. I was never very good at physics. Spirit's wrath for a spirit totem. For Thrall. Yes, um, 9.83 9 meters per second squared. Okay. You call forth an ephemeral uh, ephemeral ephemeral apparition. Ephemeral. Ephemeral. There's no R there, Adam. Phonics. Hooked on phonics, Adam. 
ephemeral, ephemeral, blah. You call one of those apparitions, appar, app, Kane, you want to read that? Which one are we doing? Spell Sunder? <laughs> no, Spirit's Wrath. Spirit's Wrath. You call forth an ephemeral apparition, typically a ghost of an ancestor or nature spirit, which takes the form of a wisp. The spirit wisp. <laughs> it wisp. Really There's no H there, Kane. Strike. Okay. Against an enemy within 25 feet of you, the Wisp uses your no attack H. modifier and deals damage equal to 48, ooh, plus your constitution modifier. There's the con modifier again. Yeah. The damage is your choice of negative or positive damage. Don't apply your circumstance or conditional bonuses to the attack or damage. If your Wisp critically There's hits no with H. a strike at target, it gains the frightened one condition. This attack takes and counts towards... Yeah, it is takes and counts. I always feel like I'm reading that wrong. There this we go. This attack takes and counts towards your multiple attack penalty as if you were the one attacking. Okay, so that clarifies what we were asking about before. It takes and counts toward your multiple attack penalty. Ah, I see your point. The other thing just said that it counts for your multiple attack penalty. But this right, one well, takes and counts, so we, we've clarified that. There you go. Um, which I like. I like how that works. Um, pretty good, except for the problem of... Uh, I like the damage. It's not bad for a 12th level feat. But but it doesn't scale. Yeah, it doesn't scale and, unless your con goes up, but you're only scaling by, what, one damage at a time then. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, it it's one of those things where you're having to do something to make somebody else do something. And again, as a barbarian, you're going to be using those. You, you need to be using those actions to do stuff. First, you have to spend an action to get this guy up. And mm -hmm. and then you have to spend an action to direct him. Good part? I'm... Yeah, you do. I'm pretty sure this is... Okay, let me reread. To direct a minion, I'm... basically, you have to direct... You have to spend an action to direct them. Um... Yeah, but it doesn't specify that. It's just that you call forth an ephemeral apparition. Like, I think it only comes forth for the attack. I don't think you actually get a minion out of this. Yeah, you like you shoot it out of your no hand. there's no minion trade oh, actions. Oh, okay. You're firing ghosts out of your arms. Okay, which that's not as bad. horrifying. It's just like a, a dead fur trader just comes flying into your chest like, ah! <laughs> it's like those ghosts on, what is that show? Man, now I can't think of it. It had Michael J. Fox in it. Kane, you probably know it. Have to be more specific. Than Michael, Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. It was the only ghost story he was in. The ghost movie. It was a ghost movie. It was at least in the '90s, probably the '80s. No, probably the '90s. He was a private investigator. There were numbers carved into victims' heads. About oh. a serial killer. See, uh, I knew I'd catch you on it. Come on, what is it? Uh, Michael J. Fox. Familiar spirits or something like that. Uh, the Ghost Whisperer. No, Ghost Whisperer. Uh, what it was a chick. The Frighteners. The Frighteners. There it is. There we go. The Frighteners. So it's like you shoot that old prospector ghost from the Frighteners out at people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anyway, well, moving on to the last 12 uh, level feet. So, picture the halfling turned into a devil devilling. Hey. So, with the titan statue, you grow into a triple ling. Yes, yeah, so it had a triple ling. You go into you grew grow even uh, even greater size when using giant uh, stature, you can in instead become huge, increasing your reach out to ten feet. So, so that's how my that's how the uh, halfling gets a viable weapon. That's huge. Yep. If uh, you are a medium or a or a or a or a smaller creature, while you are raging. You have the sluggish one one condition as long as you're huge. So the half halfling can be quite the deadly creature, being a tripling effectively using a reach weapon with reach already. 
Now I'm curious if using a, a something of a size category higher than you basically means you get no proficiency with it, right? You get a minus one. Wait, where is that? No, he's just he's the math from sluggish and trained. Sluggish, I did. I don't think sluggish applied to your attack. It applied to your AC. Okay, so this halfling barbarian could still use something two size categories higher if he was willing to take the penalty to hit, right? It's not like he can't use it. Oh, it's just that he has to take a penalty. To rolls. Uh -huh. So he basically would have a minus two to his attacks. Huh. Maybe. I'd have to look into. Although that. I should say, because the barbarian can stand to can stand to have a minus two to an attack. I mean, you could build around it. Is what I'm saying, and make it work. Fun note, when it comes to increasing die damage, like, past the d12, it just adds plus two additional damage every time. Yeah, that's fair. So, you don't necessarily get another damage dice. I, I mean, that's the effective damage increase anyways. I mean, tech, uh, it increases the maximum by two, but the average by one. So. Yeah, it's, well, anyway. yeah, your average d damage increase between, like, die damage... Is like one one point five. Yeah. So Titan stature, you basically get bigger. I still want to make the the halfling barbarian with the big old frying pan. Um, fourteenth level. Awesome blue. Awesome blue. Something that is good when you when you use it right. Your attacks are so powerful that they can flatten your opponents when you use knockback. You can attempt an athletics check against your opponent's fortitude DC. Donald, please don't breathe into your microphone. You gain, on a success, you gain uh, success, the success effect, effect of a shove, shove followed by the success of a trip. Yep. You knock him away and you knock him over. Mm -hmm. And then it scales up from there. So it's not bad. Um, when you crit, you get the crit of both of those. So you really knock them away and really knock them over. Yeah. You knock the shit out of him. So, and like, even if you even if you fail, you still move him. Yeah, I like it if they would have done knockback, but taken away the trip effect, and then had awesome blow build into the trip, because that would make knockback feel a bit more worth it to me. Mm. It does. It does feel like a little bit taxi, like it's a stepping stone to the much better feat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, awesome blow looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Uh, and it doesn't cost an action, which is nice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost well, anything. Well, it, it costs... <coughs> uh, you gotta make a check. When you use knockback, so it costs you an action to use knockback. Yeah, that's fair. That is the trigger. Um, Giant Totem. You extend your body and prepare to attack foes outside your normal reach. While you are raging, you have reached 10 on all of your melee attacks. Well, if you have Titan Stature, you already have reached 10. No, no, no. Your reach is... You increase your reach, but this is reach 10, the weapon ability. Yeah. Ah. So it adds 10 feet on top of your 10 feet. So 20 yes. feet. So it's Doesn't like having a great sword. the reach of any weapon or unarmed strike that already has reach. Right. So that feels... Like, so if if you're not using a pole arm, <laughs> you get extra striking range, right? Yeah, but that seems kind of not not a really good feat to have as like a class feat, but more like a general feat to me, because I mean I get why they're putting it in the giant's lunge, it's so you can reach those bigger giants, uh -huh. but. Why make it where you can't have reach on a reach? I understand why. I understand why. But... Because a 20-foot reach is terrifying already. It is if they have they AOOs. Have been a issue. But here, yeah, I think I think the problem is they're trying to balance around AOOs when the Barbarian doesn't have AOOs. 
No? Yeah. Mm. The Maybe. Gi- the Giant doesn't have AOOs. I mean, uh, not the Giant. The Barbarian doesn't have uh, AOOs. Well, with AOOs, the reach also isn't as important. Attacks of all, yeah, it is because if you have like a, a twenty foot away mage using a concentrate thing, he thinks he's safe. Yeah. If he uses a manipulate action or a healer that's using a manipulate action, you can interrupt that. But giant lunge isn't gonna like if you've spec this far into giant's lunge to get giant's lunge, it is very unlikely that you've spec into anything that hard enough that's going to give you an AOO. And if it has, it's only given you one. So, I mean, you're not going to break the game by letting reach weapons also have it. Because people can get right up on you. Because you can move to... You can move twice to get up on this giant without it being able to attack with an AOO. So I don't see the... Benefit-wise, this feat will add to the game... I get hmm. why they're doing it the way they're doing it, but I don't think they're. I think they're forgetting about the AOO thing. I don't know. I don't think the fuss over the extra five feet of reach is going to make a difference one way or the other. Well, it's ten. It's kind of. Reach. It's kind of a block. Well, it's you gain reach ten, so you gain a reach of ten with that weapon. Mm-hmm. So if you have reach ten on the weapon, it doesn't change. Your weapon would still be reach ten. Well, that means you go from. From a reach of fifteen, uh, from a reach of ten to, a, you go from a twenty foot reach to just a fifteen foot reach, as your big giant form. No, well, this would be the difference between uh, natural reach and weapon reach. Right, your natural reach is one thing, and then your weapon reach is after that. So you have ten feet of natural reach as a giant in your major in your huge form. And yeah, then you have an and then you have 10, 10 feet, feet of weapon reach. So if you're using a pole arm, you'd have 20 feet of reach. You'd right. only have 15 if you were swinging with your fist. But with Giant's Lunge, you would also have 20. Right, so I, I, I would like it better if it increased it. If it just said, it increases the reach of your weapon by 10. Because again, they're building around AOOs and, and stuff, I think, that the Barbarian's not going to have. All right, so we'll put that the needs revision stamp on that and move along. Sunder enchantment. Superstition totem and spell sunder. Obvious prerequisites. Um, so you basically, when you're using the spell sunder to do a counteract of an addition of an un- of either an unintended magic item or one of the target's magic items. Ooh, so this is for the breaker. Um, if you counteract attempt. If your counteract attempt succeeds, the item becomes a mundane item for of its type for ten minutes. This doesn't change the item's quality, so you still get, they would still get the extra damage die from the uh, increases in quality. Uh-huh. Uh, as with spell sunder, the target is bolstered whether or not you succeed. If the target is an artifact or a particularly powerful item, you, then your counteract attempt automatically fails. So. All right. Well, that's just yeah. That's 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 better. That's yeah. about breaking, in air quotes, uh, magic items without actually breaking them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they got upset at people, like like players got upset at other players for like, don't break the loot. That's why I said it wouldn't be a problem if the make whole spells weren't so trash. No. <laughs> So here we have the second or third of the of the reactions that a barbarian can get. So vengeful strike, you gotta have come and get me, which I still think is worded kind of iffy because it makes it sound like you, as it's written, you always take a, pro- a penalty when you're raging, but not just when you use the action. Um, but a creature within your reach succeeds or critically succeeds at an attack against you. So it's basically so come and get me on better. Yeah, this gives you the rest of what come and get me used to do. Uh, so when you're struck, you respond in turn and you make a melee strike against the triggering creature to minus two penalty. The strike doesn't count towards your multiple attack penalty and your multiple attack penalty doesn't apply to this strike. So, which... So this is its own attack made. It's, it's kind of like the Paladin's Retributive Strike. 
Yeah. So you hit me, I hit you. But selfish. Yes, but more selfish because you're a barbarian. All right, sixteenth level, dragon transformation only takes we're one almost action. Done. Yeah, we're almost done. Uh, this was a long one. Dragon transformation uh, got a bunch of tags on it. You're basically becoming a large form dragon. Um, it doesn't give an age, which is something that I thought was weird. Um, yeah, well, I don't think that they're they're more concerned about the mechanics of the dragon form than the age of the dragon because I don't know if dragons are uh, if they have their their abilities calculated based upon age category anymore than they do necessarily upon their like their challenge category. Which would prob- probably ca- correlates more closely to age. I mean, to size now. We, right. We, reading, reading how how this beat that works, it functions like the dragon form, uh, uh, form, uh, 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 dragon form uh, s- spell. Uh, spell. So right. I su- assume it functions like how it, it functions like the spell. So age doesn't really come into play unless it becomes relevant. Right. Um, I I only say that because the dragons are all different CRs. I mean, not CRs, levels. Yeah. So, like if it said you become a young this or a young that, I think they've done kind of what you're saying, Kane, and divided it up. Well, a young dragon is going to be this size, so we'll just say this size of dragon. And so on and so forth. Yeah, um, I think that may have been something may may have been something they altered in this edition. Yeah. Which in dragon form dragon hmm. form one, two, and three? You had different sizes and different modifiers. So dragon form one, you were a young dragon. Dragon form two, you were a adult, and then form three. You were of a equivalent size and age of a of a close to an ancient dragon. Effectively. Yeah, but with the way that spell used to work, assuming you weren't fighting something that had resistance to fire, you just took the red dragon every time because it's the best one. Yeah, well, the red dragon or the gold dragon. Yeah, because they're they're the best ones, and they still are by level. So if you're just changing into them. Well, it says you get to ignore your armor check penalty and your speed reduction, blah, 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 because you don't have your armor on anymore, effectively. Uh, One or more of your melee strikes, depending on your dragon form. Oh, that's right. See page 218. Um, Which the type that you attack is the only type of attack you use, so you don't get the multi-attack. You're trained with them. Uh, When you attack with them, the damage is sick, is... Your damage bonus is plus six. Okay, so they're assuming your strength modifier on it. Basically, they just standardize. This is this is like they apply the dragon template to you is what they're doing. Yeah, you turn into a dragon, and this is how much damage you do. This is what your resistances are. You get blind sense, 60 feet, and dark vision, a speed of 40, a fly speed of 100, and a breath, a breath, a breath action you can activate by spending two actions. DC 24 for half damage, no damage on a critical success. They list a bunch of things that you can do when you are a dragon, and that sort of becomes who you are while you're using this ability. And it seems that it scales at 18th level. Your fly speed is increased. Uh, Your damage boosts to plus 12, which mm-hmm. isn't bad because these are level 16 feats. Uh, yeah, but that's at 18th and, level. Yeah. Well, yeah, but these are 16... I'm saying, like, two levels later, your bonus to damage doubles. Yeah. Uh, your breath weapon DC increases to 30, and you gain a plus 14 conditional bonus to your breath weapon damage. Hmm. Side note. Those completely and totally coincide with dragon form and a titan form. Oh, well, there you go. So, so you're basically just casting dragon form. Yes, but late. Yeah. That makes sense. You're a barbarian. And, yeah, for basically the same number of act, Not necessarily. Slightly better action economy. Yeah, it's yeah, one action. You're spending one because you don't need the verbal and semantic. 
Right, and by 11th level, since as soon as you rage, you get a free action you can throw in. Oh yeah, that's true. It's like legitimately one action, and it normally takes two, but the version you get at 16th level is a 6th level spell, and the version you get at 18th level is an 8th level spell. So, like, if you're I mean, playing... at 18th level, that's not bad. You're only, like, one spell level behind everyone else. If Well, for one spell, yeah. Yeah, um, well, it's the only you're... spell you can cast. You're a barbarian. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're gishing in, if you're gishing in the playtest to make a, uh, a spellcaster barbarian, mm. I think you can... Can't you multi-class into sorcerer? Yeah. Yeah, but you okay. get 8th level spells at 20th level in multi-class. Like, in... Yeah. Archetyping in. So, like, this is still earlier than that. Right. I'm just saying that it's that it's thematically something. If you wanted to make a Blood Rager, yeah. this is a really thematic way to make a Blood Rager. And it's not a bad spell. It's not a bad effect. And it's worth one action. It's a good, it's good for what it is. Yeah. At its level. So. Perfect clarity. Trigger. You fail or critically fail an attack roll or will save while you are raging. Will save has my interest. You yep. burn all of your rage to ensure that your attack lands and that your mind remains free. Reroll the triggering attack roll or will save. Use the best result and resolve the effect. Uh, you then immediately stop raging. Not that you can't just begin raging again the following round. Well, the rage feature says that if you stop raging for any reason, you are fatigued for the next yeah, you round. are fatigued, so a round, and then you start raging again. Yeah, like if you end it on your, like if this is your free action at the end of your, of whatever, if this is your free action, when in a response to something, then yeah, it's not bad. Um, as long as you're on the ground and not flying, uh, yeah. it's, it's good. Uh, <laughs> that brings up another question. <laughs> this dragon thing they really need to clarify if you slowly descend or if you all of a sudden you're a dragon for 18 seconds and then poof you're not a dragon again no you're just not a dragon you <laughs> fall to your death yeah you fall everyone dies I think that's the way Paizo intended it high risk high reward you're a dragon now you're dead yeah whirlwind strike for three actions. Does not have cleave or mighty cleave as a prerequisite. Yep. Wholly independent. Yep. Which you attack is... all foes within your reach. Make melee strikes against all enemies within your melee reach. Each attack accounts towards your multiple attack penalty, sir. If you're using a forceful weapon at this point, if you have a five damage dice, you're not taking any penalties. There you go. Uh, so if you're using a glaive or a falchion or if you're multi-classed into monk for some dumb reason, uh, yeah. obviously not that dumb. Yeah, but you do not increase your penalty until you have made all of your attacks. What? It's it's basically saying you that you don't take the penalty on the attacks. It happens afterward. Why would you? It's using all three of your actions, and yes, you're hasted. It doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know. No, I the ad right. Let me double check phrasing. It's saying so the, the yeah, same this, thing. This just goes please. back to the exact same thing where we were like, "This needs clarification." Yeah. But yeah, no. The idea basically is that how it normally goes is that after each attack, you stack up the penalty. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, it never gets higher than ten, though. Right. But the idea, right, is that if you are hasted, your fourth thing could, like, the one action you spend on that would have minus 10 on it, but all of these would be at normal. Well, yeah, but this is more than three attacks. It says you attack all foes within your reach. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So if you're using but, however, a glaive say... and you dropped yourself in a crowd, that's like... No, no. A dozen dudes. See, this More. is yeah. This is the only reason that they would limit it with the reach. You go Titan Mauler. Uh, so you're a Titan Barbarian, and you get up this high. You take Whirlwind Strike with a glaive or any weapon. Or, well, if they you wouldn't work. You it. can't attack people immediately next to you with reach weapons. Sorry, that did, yeah. But you can if you not with a glaive. M mob. 
but with um, a I... with a uh, great sword because it gains the reach quality. It doesn't. Yeah, so you'd have cabin. reach twenty. So you'd hit everyone within twenty feet of you. Yep. Gross. Beautiful. The frying pan. Bang! 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 At either no penalty or at an increasing penalty. It this re- needs clarification. It reads like no penalty. I really but... hope it's not at no penalty because that's ridiculous. That's a requisite feat um, if you get a lot of people around. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it so, doesn't matter what you're playing, you're going to take that if it's at no penalty. That's a purple feat. I should note that uh, Reach does not restrict you from attacking people right next to you. Right. It does not anymore? Nope. Up not to 10 feet edition. away instead of only adjacent creatures. Right. Oh, it says that's ridiculous. Up to 10 feet away. Yes. Yeah. All right. So it's nice. I like that. As someone who likes to play with glaives. Uh, 18th level. Brutal critical. Your criti- critical hits are particularly devastating. On a critical hit, add one extra damage die. This is in addition to any extra damage die you already gain if the weapon is deadly or fatal. Target also takes persistent bleed damage equal to one damage die. Which That's is, unclear. You know, does it does it mean like the damage the target also takes persistent bleed damage equal to one e- damage equal to die. one damage die from your weapon? So if you're using so a d12 weapon, it's one d12. I'm oh, assuming you would they, roll it. They roll it each time. They bleed. No, I think you only roll it once because it's persistent. So you roll it once and they take it every round. So it's a separate roll from your damage roll. Yes. Okay. It's either you roll it or they take the maximum amount. At 18th level, they may take the maximum amount. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, 12, 12 points of damage every round at 18th level isn't terrifying. Yeah, not if you're a barbarian at 18th level. If you're, a cler- if you're an elven bad. cleric, all the damage matters. Well, maybe you shouldn't have neglected your constitution so much. I did it on purpose. No, that's your own fault. Uh, one, 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 one thing when I, when I ever play elves, I never ever have a, have a ne- negative con on fire. Well, I mean, most people never have a negative con because you're going to get hit eventually. Yeah, I just did it and took toughness and it made up for it, but still, it's not a lot of hit points. Um, sometimes you eat the bar, sometimes the bar eats you. Vicious evisceration. Two actions. You make a vicious attack that maims your enemy. Make a melee strike that gains the following enhancement. Uh, see page 294, the enhancement, the target is drained one. Okay, before I go out and say this is incredibly weak, what does drained mean, Levi? You flay his chest and his fucking heart drops out. <laughs> oh, I'm in the wrong... Sorry, I have a couple bookmarks in, and I was at the wrong one of them. No problem. Dying, deaf, and drained. When a creature drained. successfully yes. drains you of blood or some other life force... I mean, I'm not doing become... that shit again, you just read it. <laughs> <laughs> you become less healthy. Uh, drained always includes a value. You take a conditional penalty equal to the value on fortitude saves and constitution-based checks. You lose a number of hit points equal to your level times yeah. the drained value, and your maximum hit points are reduced by the same amount. Mm. So you so do basically, basically two thirty-two damage. damage. You basically do thirty-two damage then. With that hit. Well, includes, well 40, because your max would go down by 20 in your... Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if no, I'm assuming your, ma- your max level. Uh, not, not 18, if I'm assuming your max level. Okay. So, yeah, it go down by 40. I mean... I don't know. Mm-hmm. You can do more each damage day than when that. you regain hit points, you're, by resting, your drained value is reduced by 1. Okay, so you're only going to give them target is drained. You're only going to give them drained one. It's never going to go up. Mm, yeah, would it increase though if you hit them again? No. Nah, because it only it maintain it. Yeah. That's the okay, that's yeah. the that, problem with the conditions. That's not. I wouldn't call that incredibly weak, but it's not. I don't think it's. I don't think it's two feet, action. Yeah, I don't think it's worth two actions, and I don't think it's feet eighteen worthy. No. So. I think this beats a little lackluster. 
It's a, it's a, it's especially a, when there's brutal cold, cold right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is, especially when it's right beneath the better feet. Yeah, that just happens when you're already hitting. Yeah. Uh, level twenty, the last two. Contagious rage. You stoke an ally's fury. While you are raging, one willing creature within thirty feet gains the same damage bonus and AC penalty that you do while you are raging. If the ally wasn't already raging, she gains the temporary hit points from your rage action as well. The ally can still use actions with the concentrate trait, and she doesn't become fatigued when you stop raging. So you give someone a better fucking rage than you. Yeah, basically. Which, I mean, if you're going, even if you're not going Bard Barian, this is a pretty good feat. So you rage for one action... Then you give you activate contagious rage for one action. Then you well, at this at this level your raging is a free action. Well, there that's right, that's right. So you rage is a free action. You give them contagious rage as a, a single action. You move and then you attack, or you stride with pounce. You basically pounce, and then you get another attack with your minus with only a minus five at twentieth level, which means relatively nothing. So, I mean. That's 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 good, because you're basically giving someone your temporary hit points. Not, it's not calculated off their con score; it's calculated off of your con score. Yeah, which makes it worth it. Well, I mean, you're not going to be giving this to your wizard. You give it to you're, you give it to give one it willing to, like, creature, your, your ranger, or your fighter, or something. Yeah, uh, I I think that it's I think Maybe it's you're really both. good as it stands. I'd like it better if it said your allies within 30 feet. Because what happens... That's a lot, though. Well, what happens is that... Because you're not going to have very many hit points at 20th level, even if you are a... Um, I'm not going to have very many hit points? Not as a wizard. Or oh, a no. sorcerer. Or a, a, even a cleric might could have some trouble, but probably wouldn't. They're moderate. But... Like your squishy people that need these extra te- temporary hit points if something happens to them. Well, I cause... think the temporary hit points are secondary to the the damage bonus. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. But the point is that if it gave it to everyone, then it would have a use even for them. Yeah, that would be amazing, though, if you could give it to your entire party. Aren't you supposed to be amazing in the twentieth level? I, I mean, you are, but like giving you were it trying to everyone to, seems like a lot. You, you're trying to sell and me on this whole weird superheroes damage. thing. I didn't. Well, you are. You are basically your superhuman weirdos. Uh, you're you got legendary fortitude. You're you're walking around on the bottom of the ocean floor because you can hold your breath for five hours. No, you can't. Yeah, you can't. No, you can't. We didn't. Yeah, we, you can't. We didn't do the math. We didn't do the math. No. no yeah, you can't. <laughs> I'm sure there's a feat for it. Uh, <laughs> Quaking Stomp, your other 20th level barbarian feat. Frequency once per minute. Barbarian, manipulate rage. You shake the ground, topple creatures, and shatter structures in a 60 foot aura around you. All squares in the area become difficult terrain. This is Groundbreaker from first edition, but like on. Every type of hard drug you can find. Attack rolls and skill checks by creatures on the ground take a minus two circumstance penalty. Any creature on the ground within the area must attempt a reflex save at the start of its turn to keep its footing and avoid falling into fissures that open up in the ground. So you're pretty much casting Earthquake. Yep. The fissures are 40 feet deep, so anyone who falls in takes 20 bludgeoning damage. The fissures are permanent and the walls require a DC-15 athletics check to climb, which is nothing at 20th level. You literally can't fail it. You automatically succeed at your saving throw to avoid any fissures you create. Any structures or ceiling in the area has a chance to collapse. The GM makes a flat check for each structure, determining the DC for each. DC-16 for a sturdy structure, DC-14 for an average structure, and most natural formations, DC-9 for a shoddy structure, or higher or lower as the GM sees fit. A collapse deals 11d6 bludgeoning damage. Any creature caught in a collapse must succeed a reflex save to escape it. Success. Target takes half collapse damage and falls prone. Crit success takes half collapse damage. Failure takes full collapse damage and falls prone. Critical failure takes full damage, full collapse damage, and falls into a fissure. Taking an additional 20% full damage. 
<laughs> Your clicking stomp might have additional effects in certain types of terrain. For instance, a cliff might collapse, causing creatures to fall uh, atop, creatures causing atop. creatures atop it to fall. Or a lake might drain any fissures open up below its surface. I don't know where I fuck. I give up. Morass of quicksand. Blah, 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 blah. But environmental effects. Environmental effects. This is this is a worthy twentieth level ability, I'd say. I got a It feels now. so cool. Yeah, no, you really are casting like earthquakes by just fucking kicking the dirt real hard. Once I, per minute you earthquake. Yep. Can you that's imagine? This is how you good. siege a castle. So you're playing... And you don't have to rage. Yep. You just you just go ah and then the No no it breaks. does have the rage trait. It, well, does it but yeah, but it doesn't say when you rage. I know, but I'm pretty sure the rage trait means you have to be raging. It's uh, I might be wrong. Up here in the key terms, let me see. Um, you must be raging to use abilities with the rage trait, and they end automatically when you stop raging. Oh, okay, well, there so... we go about whether you're going to fly or not after you quit raging. Quick, quick, um, yeah, you die. <laughs> Breaking uh, stop with the rage power, so you need to be in rage. Yeah, this Levi just said that. Yeah. So it's still good. Once per minute, you get mad, you break a wall, and then you just like chill out for a bit. You yeah, you just you you you, you super saiyan scream, and all the rocks fly everywhere. Ah uh, yeah. Um, but this is definitely a good feat. I'm not so sure. It probably beats out contagious rage. It kind of well, I mean. It's going to be viable whatever kind of Yeah, I was going to say this has either. I, I like both of them. Because I think you're basically, you're turning one of your other fighter friends with Contagious, contagious Rage, you're turning one of your other frontline friends into a 20th level Barbarian. Mm -hmm. Or you're casting Earthquake. Yeah. So, I like it. I, I, as as. As a whole, I like the Barbarian. We can come to our closing thoughts now, because we are way... It's like three oh, hours Oh, there are so many minutes. tangents yeah. Yeah, that have but, nothing to do. We... <laughs> but um, as far as I'm concerned, the, the flavor and what they're going for with the Barbarian is really good. I don't like the raging mechanic, but other than that, it seems like a really solid one. And if they change the key score to Constitution, the I think that would be best. And that that's kind of my summarization of it. What about you guys? I think if anybody has made it this far in the recording, <laughs> congratulations. You're a real trooper. Hopefully you haven't fallen asleep already. Maybe you've been washing dishes while this has been going on. Or doing your laundry. a lot of dishes. Or vacuuming the house. You've been doing all your chores. Uh, but good on you for making it this far in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I like a lot of it. I don't like some of the rest of it. I I agree. I think the rage mechanic, and we said this before when we were talking about the vlogs, that the, the rage just feels really gimmicky, and I don't like it, and I think that they should they should change it. Yeah. What about I don't know how often that problem will come up, but just yeah, just talking about the ones that let you fly. Oh, you're flying for twenty seconds. Oh, you hit the twenty-first second, or you're gonna fall to your death. Have fun, nerd. Yep. Yes. But the uh, the current system, how the rage how it works uh, by default. I I like uh, I like how it works to a certain extent, but definitely. Need to be improved so you can get more more of a uh, duration use out of it. Indeed. And what about you, Levi? Um, they definitely seem fun. I think I see a lot of room for even more class feats to exist in certain areas. Um, I don't know. Okay. When I think of the rage mechanic, I don't think of it actually the traditional, like, getting angry. I think of it, like, when I'm personally, like, oh, I need to, like, cut this tree down, but I'm not 
generally strong, so I will literally make myself angry to hit things harder. But, like, I can't fake the emotion for long enough to, like, just have it last throughout the day, and that's the version of rage I get out of this. I like, know. I can actually psych myself up into fake anger and, like, get my adrenaline pumping for a short period of time to, like, use more of my muscle than normal. Yeah, well, like, I... I like it like that. Like, I like the idea of psyching yourself up. Uh, and, and then there's all the weird magic that mixes in that kind of breaks out. that. Yeah, after a while, but, like, when they pair it up, like you said, with all those abilities that just end after 18 seconds and potentially put you in a life-threatening situation, they're not good. They're bad. Having a fly speed is amazing in any tabletop role-playing game, but uh, not if you constantly seconds of it. falling to your death. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, travelers, again, as Kane said, for sticking with us. It's been over three hours, probably close to three and a half. We apologize it took so long, but oh, good. one of our one of the viewers did say that they liked the long, they weren't upset with the long form review, so hopefully they were prepared for a three hour. You, um, you wanted in-depth character examination? There you go. There you go. There you go. We might, I don't know, maybe, do you think we could speed these up? I, I think I know who you're talking about, and they also mentioned that they wish these came out faster. Well, yeah, I know it. I, I know that is the person. And as far as speeding them up, I think the Barbarian took so long because we had it had a lot more to cover, like, even more than the Alchemist because of the way yeah, they had the totems. Of they had a lot of feet. They had a good amount of feats, and they had totems to cover. So um, each of those was a thing. But if we didn't have to ta cover all those, we could have knocked at least an hour off this, talking about the totems. Anyway. If it's it. um, Thank you, travelers, for coming back. We hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. God bless and enjoy. Bye. Are you going to say something, Donald? Hmm? Uh, yeah, I was going to say the other classes, uh, they uh, they do not take up as uh, as uh, as uh, as uh, many as much time. Can... Yeah. All right. All Have right. a great day. God bless. Bye. 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 Peace out.